Do sarri ma mangindele ve la mandele vecchi rima sarra ma mandele vecchi alla mosifra ma mandele me ne vina la mombra vai. Sereri me ne sili bindala la mokorama ma silena mosca. Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. You're drawing me. 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 I see my whole life before me as being right in the big middle of everything that God the Holy Ghost has purposed to do in the earth. And it doesn't look like less than what happened on the day of Pentecost. It doesn't look anything less than what happened through Philip's life when he went out into Samaria and preached Jesus. And I'm telling you, it didn't take weeks. It was days. And the place was filled with the joy of God. Because of the signs and the wonders and the miracles which he did, Hallelujah! I, I, listen, let me just tell you: you have to begin to begin. You have to begin to be involved with what God is doing, so that you can begin to get needy and desperate for what you do not have. Just go and preach in Samaria and see what happens, and contrast and compare it to what Philip had. And, and you're either going to say you're going to make a doctrine that says God isn't moving in the same way today or you're going to recognize that it's just you that, with, that is without that provision which God himself has poured out upon all whosoever is willing to be full time into the kingdom of God to go ahead and live the life of Jesus. You know, the scripture says they will deny, they deny, Peter said they deny the Lord God who bought them. That isn't denying a historical Jesus. That isn't denying a religious de Jesus. That is denying the one whom you are now supposed to be the slave to, the servant of. Man cannot serve God and mammon. So when ultimately men begin to serve mammon, they begin to serve their own desire, their own will, their own purpose, their own vision, their own concept of what life is. They are literally denying that Christ Jesus bought and paid for and purchased them and that they are His servant. It's like saying somehow, that yes, I recognize that you're owning me, that you bought me, that I'm your servant, but I've got to go over here and be a servant to someone else. Father is looking for some people who will say, okay, I'm going to begin to take up the mantle. You know, Elijah had the opportunity of taking up the mantle of Elijah in a unique way. It was a greater ministry and a greater anointing. Father has given to you and I the privilege of taking up His ministry, His anointing, the display of His glory and power in a greater way. But there are so, there are so few on the planet that are willing to do it. There are so few that are willing to say my whole life is defined by what Jesus described and modeled for me. Tonight, I want you to look at Pentecost. I want you to look at the price of Pentecost. I want you to look at 120 people. I want you to, first of all, look at 500 people that are gathered together with the Lord Jesus Christ and hear Him give His last declaration and His last message, as it were, before He made His transition into His position in the unseen realm in the heavenlies at the right hand of the Father. He says, Go tarry in Jerusalem. 120 people make it there at the risk of their life. Under peril of death. 
with no definition about any alternate dualistic double-minded life where your eye is on two things at the same time. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot, you cannot live his life while you're living your own. And I'm going to tell you right now, God doesn't give people the ability to do second best. And I'm telling you, sometimes we just think, my goodness, if God's people were doing second best, it would be an advancement. He gives us the ability to live far a month and do way beyond anything that could be accomplished in the natural realm. He's poured out the blessings and the benefits of his riches and given us the commission to represent him in the earth and to do what it is he's purposed to do. Come on, man. Yes, King Amram was wondering why on earth everything he tried to do it against the nation of Israel was exposed before he did it. And his servant said to him, because there's a prophet of God, there's a man of God who knows what you think when you're sitting in, when, what you say when you're sitting in the secret of your bed chamber. There's one thing for sure, until you recognize and begin to contrast and compare your life to the reality of that which God has purposed you and I to be. It's not wise for us to compare ourselves among ourselves, but I'm going to tell you, it is very, very wise wise for you to compare yourself to Jesus Christ because God told us to be conformed to the image of His Son. He's told us in every way to, that our call and our purpose is to walk in His ministry, to follow in His footsteps, to take up our cross and follow Him, to be His servants, to be His disciples, to imitate Him. <laughs> people revival tarries because there's very few people passionate they want to justify they want to redefine they want to somehow make their life qualify because they got an answer to prayer sometime long ago God wants to give you anointing that breaks off the yoke of everybody you rub up against yes. Thank you, not Jesus. just talk to not just yes. talk to God wants to give you a yes, vision Lord. for your family, your yes, immediate Lord. family, your friends, the people in your workplace Amen. to where all of a sudden you show up at your workplace and the place begins to tremble with Amen. the glory of God. Amen. I remember one day we had to peel bread off the floor in the middle of the lab. The glory of heaven was in the place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. We are, we are fast approaching one of the greatest moments in the history of the church. I believe, I believe without without any contradiction, I don't care what you look at and compare it to in the past, this is gonna be greater. What God is gonna do is gonna be great. You know, I would hate to think, I would hate to think that I was gonna be on the sidelines, that I was gonna be left out, and somehow I was gonna be sitting in my living room showing up for church on Sunday night. <laughs> doing the same thing that I've been doing all my life. Not much. When all around me, signs and wonders and miracles and people who've only known Jesus for six months are doing them. People who've only known Jesus for three years doing great exploits in God. See, everybody that has ever been used by God, you know, the things that are forming in your life, are people who somewhere, sometime, they had an encounter with God and made, they got desperate. And they said, I can't live without the anointing. I can't live without the display of His power and glory. They had no longer any boast in themselves. They had no longer any boast in that which they possessed or boast within the qualifications of how they define life because that really is the definition of the pride of life. To boast in your own substance. To boast in your own ability. See, it's easier for, other, for those of us who don't have anything but Him. So many people, they've got all kinds of brilliance and intelligence and ability. But some of us don't have much at all. The only thing we could possibly ever hope to have is what God would give us by His Holy Ghost. And then that's even bigger because the Holy Spirit comes and shows us, this is yours. This is what I want you to do. I want you to live my life. And it's not like some sacrifice. It's not like some kind of, you know, something that we've got to lose out on. And do. It's like, wait a minute. I just saw the pearl. I just saw the treasure. What? You're saying, What? The response that Elisha had, oh my goodness. You couldn't have, I'm gonna tell you, I know for a fact, God searches men, he searches men and he saw 
He saw Elisha. He told Elijah, go, go over there to Elisha the Tishbite and anoint him. Go get him. He saw a man who was there willing to throw it all in for him. His eyes go to and fro searching, looking for someone. The response of Elisha. Oh, wow. You could not have, I guarantee you, ask him one day. You could have not excited him and honored him more if you told him he was going to be king of the world. He was now going to be the man of God. He was now going to be the man of God on the earth that would take Elijah's place. Where he could stand up and say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And take his mantle and smite the creek, the brook, and it parts. And all the prophets standing around see the glory of God. The glory of Elijah is falling upon Elisha. It's time that all the prophets and all the people of the world and all the people involved in the New Age cult and witchcraft and Buddhism and Hinduism. And there is a lot of witchcraft in Hinduism. There's a lot of magic in Hinduism. There's a lot of spiritism in these various different religions. Suddenly become fascinated at the wonder and the glory of the presence of the living God who's standing in our midst. Just sometimes something's got to happen where you break free of those things that entangle you in the world. Something's got to happen. It's a change. God has given us the power and the ability to change. We hold on to our life and clutch it like it's our last hope. I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of you begin to live your life like one minute after your death. I pray from now on you live your life with such dependence and such complete surrender to God it's with the same mentality it's with the same consecration it's with the same consciousness of one minute after you are dead because you've never taken that pathway home you do not know the way thereof and if you are going to continue on doing it your own way I'm afraid that you're going to find yourself not being carried away in his glory but finding and lifting up your eyes being in torment because Father makes it very clear about our eye being single upon Him. He makes it very clear that we cannot neglect so great a salvation. That we can't just take for granted that He has thrown His mantle upon us. I mean, it's like Elisha saying, what's this, man? What's this? I don't need this. Who's Jesus? I don't need Jesus. What's this? I'm busy. I've got 12 yoke of oxen out here. I've got 11 other workers. I'm plowing with the 12th one. We got a big harvest. We got commitments out for the next three, four years. Consignment already going on. He was just waiting. He was just waiting. He was hungry. Tonight I pray that you're hungry. Tonight I, be, I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has placed in your hand. That you no longer make it secondary. And, and, and so I'm, I think once again. I think sometimes if it was the second most important thing in your life. Whatever God has given you to do. It would be a step up. But you begin to make the things of God first. You begin to make them primary. People, this is something that begins in a relationship with God. It begins with a relationship with Jesus. You can't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus and walk around in a religious mindset. In a self-contentment. No. No, when you begin to become hungry and thirsty, when all of a sudden you begin to open up your understanding, God, you begin to respond to the understanding that God has given us the knowledge that God has given us of the ability that we can now walk in His glory, all the provision that He has for us, you become broken. You become broken. I must have you, Lord. I must have the things of heaven. You don't become condemned. You don't become ashamed. You're not all up in some competition thing. All disappointed with yourself. No, you become broken before the master. God, I, God, I've got to have these things that you've given. I've got to have that which you poured out. That precious anointing. It's free, but it's not cheap. It's still as sacred as ever. Father, still searching those and searching out those who hunger and thirst after him. Those who seek him. Those who, res, who are willing to recognize and let God the Holy Spirit show you what Christ did for you at Calvary. Where you're going, Really? You, you did that for me? Really? What? What? You went down into hell for me? What? You won gifts for me? You caused me to be raised up together with you now to live your life? 
Because that becomes a crisis moment in time where you have no more affections whatsoever in this world. You are totally detached. Money means nothing to you. House means nothing to you. Job means nothing to you. Now you're ready to go and do whatever God says to do. You're not clutching your own life and holding on those things that, are you, that you value as important. You're not walking in a fence and pointing the finger of accusation and wondering why you don't have more for you to consume in your own desire. It's about, about abandonment. The Lord said, unless you hate mother and father, you're not worthy of me. Unless you hate son and daughter, you're not worthy of me. It's a total detachment. Listen to me. As I ministered to you this morning, Abraham, he loved Ish- Ishmael. But he loved father more. And there was a consecration to father his all of his affections was in God that's why he was a stranger and a pilgrim though he could have built a city and been the king of it he could have built a nation and built the king of it he was he wanted only to well and intense as a stranger and a sojourner because he sought a kingdom whose builder and maker was God his whole life his whole affection his whole passion his whole vision his whole everything was in God as I said this morning he could have loaded up hundreds of camels and loaded them up with food and provision for months He could have loaded up a camel with gold and silver and taken care of Ishmael for the rest of his life. He thrust him out with enough little bit of water for a day. He thrust him out with a little bit of food for a day. He thrust him to the care of Almighty God. So he did also with Isaac. And so he asked the same of you and me. People run to ruin for one of two things. They either allow iniquity in their life or they're making God second. Really giving them the leftovers. Busy with their own affections, busy with their own self, busy with their own agenda, creating in their own mind what they are worthy of, what they can have, what they can do. Father's called you and I to come into a place of waiting on Him to recognize that He's given us His ministry. I mean, can you imagine what the disciples were thinking when Jesus had already given them? According to Matthew 9, he had already given them all power and all authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out. In other words, they had already been given a position in the realms in the, of, of heaven that there was nothing that Satan could do around them. They had absolute authority over every work of the demonic. And he also gave them the same for diseases. And now the Lord is telling them, that he's going to give them a greater power that they must wait and have because they, this is something that they've got to receive. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to be witnesses. You listen to me tonight. God is talking to you. You listen to me. God's yes. talking to you. Yes. Self-justified people. God's talking to you. He's calling you to come deeper and deeper still. We want God to fit into our life. He will not. We value the wrong things. We make success that which is described by men rather than that which is commanded by God. Go tarry in Jerusalem to be endued with power. Can you imagine their excitement? They're thinking, my goodness, we just had, we out, we've already got power and authority over all unclean spirits and over all diseases. And he's saying we're getting something more. He's telling us we've already given, we've already been able to be mentored in this place of signs and wonders and the demonstration of the very power of God that executes authority over everything that belongs to the kingdom of darkness and amen. He says, I'm going to give you something far greater. The promise of the Father is about to come. That promise that Father made the very moment that Adam transgressed and rebelled, where Adam failed at trusting God and Abraham succeeded, Christ Jesus personified. Now Father is going to give to every man who says, I I do not want my own life. He says, if you, he said, unless you hate your own life in this world, as you're willing to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. Because if you find your life, you shall certainly lose it. But if you lose your life, you shall find it. He says, for my sake and for the kingdom's sake. People, it's time to quit self-justifying. It's tr- time to quit 
requalifying and redefining what God has said so it can fit into your parents' description of what you need to be doing with your life. Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Because it looks to me, it looks much more like man than God. The goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Father's not willing that any perish, but all come to the knowledge of salvation. Father's will is very different than the will of men, but each man gets to choose. I'm telling you right now, I'm on you tonight. You can either get yourself crawled back into a place of shame and depression, or you can get broken before God and start crying out to God and say, no more. Yes. People want to hold on to their life and they become sad. They want to hold on to their own life. They become depressed. They want to hold on to their own life. They become mad because they're religious and they're taking away their cloak of self-justification and self-righteousness. It's time to quit playing patty cake with your mediocrity. Come on, people. You're willing to be satisfied with less than the mantle of Jesus Christ. You're willing to go ahead after all of these years and call yourself fit. Give me a break. The Lord brings it down. He, he brings it down in the same passion of, of him saying by his servant Paul, if you neglect, not reject, if you neglect so great a salvation, you shall surely perish. That's what the Lord Jesus says. Neglect. Neglect. Jesus picks it up. It is addressed to the church at Laodicea in Revelation chapter three. I don't be. I don't. I'm not sure. You know. I was reading the other night and how that after the king of Assyria had displaced Israel, the northern kingdom, he had brought in people from different nations. It was primarily six different nations to settle in Samaria and the northern parts of Israel to totally. Change the profile and the condition and the culture. And the scripture says, And the Lord sent lions among them to devour them. And they recognized, wait a minute, the God, we don't know how to serve the God of this land. And they had all these various gods they served. They burned their children in the fire to them. They served every vile God you can think of in history. Looks much like a modern day Southern California. The riotous partying that goes on Friday night, the homosexuality, the perversion, the iniquity, the self, the, the, the self-serving of every kind of abasement, every kind of defilement. Those demons haven't changed, they just modified with men's culture. And so the king of Assyria had sent for a priest among the Levites that had been scattered throughout the dominion of Assyria, that he may come and teach them the ways of the living God. And the scripture says they came and they feared the Lord, but they continued to serve their own gods and their own idols. That's what Papa has to put up with. It's time to quit playing make-believe Christianity just because that's what your mom and daddy did. It's time to stop with your make-believe service to God just because that's what the models are around you. It's time to turn to God with your whole heart. It's time to start reading the Bible and start saying, yes. no more am I living out my life Amen. in something that looks different, that's fashioned different than that which was seen in Philip's life, Stephen's life, James' life, John's life. Everybody that was there at Pentecost that had any description, look at, look at their lives. We've been assimilated into a world neutralized at best. Somebody's going to have to break three because God's got something far greater than what you're looking around and seeing right now. I don't care what people are doing about me. I'm looking over here and I'm seeing the fire of the Holy Ghost who falls on the day of Pentecost in a group of 120 people who stumble out into the street and immediately 3,000 people are saved that are so filled with the anointing of heaven. They are, not, they are no longer of this world. They are not of this earth. They don't look like the world. They don't act like the world. They don't, they don't fit into the culture. They don't fit into the system. They don't fit into the sociology. The world cannot understand them, cannot know them. How much can the world know and understand you? How much do you relate to the world? Come on, give me a break. You depend on the money. You depend upon the bank account. Think about it, man. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. You think about it. You can't serve God and mammon. 
you, you're, you're concerned about what you're, what you're going to wear. You, you basically take your funds and you put it into a house. God called you and told you to get yourself a house and pay all your money for your mortgage on your house. And that's what your life is about. Give me a break. It doesn't say that anywhere. Come on, people. It's about time you and I turn our lives around and we start saying everything that I own belongs to God. I own nothing. All that I possess belongs to the Lord. Belongs to the Lord. Will Father give wealth that he may establish covenant? Yeah, but it's people who it all belongs to the Lord. It's about his kingdom. It's about being exalted above the nations of the earth. It's not about us making a kingdom. It's about us being a part of seeing what God has produced within our life, the kingdom that Christ Jesus has established right now. Hallelujah. That you and I are supposed to be walking in. Father has given us authority. We don't have to wait for a sovereign move of God. It's already happened. He's given us authority to turn people from Satan to God. Where is that happening? Where is that happening? Where? People want to clap and shake their hands, say shout hallelujah, nothing's going on. Give me a break. Give yourself a break. It's time to get real. Start looking at what God has made available. Start saying, wait a minute. What's going on here in my life? When's the last time I stood in front of somebody and they came under the conviction of the Holy Ghost because I'm standing in the presence of the Lord wherever I stand, He stands. Because I've laid hold on something. Everybody that is being used by God had an encounter, a moment of encounter, a moment of breaking. To where all of a sudden their entire life was redefined for them. Their vision, their purpose was redefined for them. And now they've had an all-consuming passion within their life to fulfill the commission that Christ Jesus gave to us. To walk in the anointing that he's poured out upon us. People, you need to have that moment. You need to have that moment. Because it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. Crystal, I'm going to tell you right now, the fire of God. What Father is doing in your life right now, I'm, it just, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I can see you hovering over your, I can see you hugger, hovering over your keyboards for hours at a time saying, God, use me. Lord, I want your anointing to flow through me. I want this to be a reality in my life. I want to live for you fully. That's all, because all of a sudden you have it. You, at most, some moment in time you have an encounter and now nothing else can satisfy you. So many people stand at the crossroads of decision and there is dreams and visions in God that was there planted and described by the word of God and by the models and by those historic figures in the church that have gone on before us. And, you know, I looked at, Aunt, when we left the house, I looked over at Ann's nightstand and I saw signs and wonders by Mariah Woodworth Edder. People who visit heaven, who are models, who want to rejoice in man too much. I'd start getting hold of God if I were you. People think it's good enough just to get all excited about somebody else's life while theirs is, a, is completely shambles. It's time to step up. People stand at the crossroads of dreams and visions in God. On one side is dreams and vision. On the other side is money. You're always deciding, asking money whether or not you can fulfill your dreams and vision. I think the greatest compliment is that someone says, I have no responsibility or concern or calculation about how. I make decisions financially. Thank you. It's not my God. You can't serve God in mammon. It's where, it's, it's where everybody stops. You, many people's treasures in their job. You don't, you don't believe it? Just tell your wife you're going to quit. The first thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a conversation about where's the money coming from. Yes, you're servant of money. You're denying the Lord who bought you. You deny him. And wonder why you're powerless. You listen to me. Hey, but when I come along, just basically build you up, make you feel like you've achieved. We didn't achieve nothing. We didn't achieve nothing. Father's called us to tarry till we endued with power from on high begin to take up the ministry of Jesus Christ and there's a price to pay. You have to forsake everything. And if you're not worthy to take up your cross and follow, if you're not willing to take up your cross and follow him, you're not worthy of him. And that describes that you're no longer living for your own self. 
You're no longer going to do your own will. But you're going to begin, you know, you heard me say it many times, if people would just take Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7 and start living them, their whole life would be revolutionized. I, I wonder if anybody even went and read it after I said it. So many times. And you open up your Bibles and you read it and you say, Father, I want to do this. I'll do this, Father. Father, I'm not going to take any more. I, uh, Father, I repent. I have taken thought from my well-being, my life, my clothing, my stuff. How it's all going to fit in for me. How I'm going to be comfortable. And then I write, your will be done over top of it. And act like God is going to change his mind and buy in on it. And wonder why I can't ever move forward in the realms of the anointing and the signs and wonders and be a part, a manifest, declared part of the body of Christ which is only defined by the working of the gifts of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost through our lives. It's time for a change, people. It's time, it's time, it's time for a change. It's time you step up. It's time you step up. There's so many. This harvest is white here in San Diego. You could go into the barrios and begin to get hundreds of kids, but oh, it's going to cost you your time. Oh, it's going to cost you your love of ease. Oh, it's going to risk for your life. There are so many people to go reach right now here in this, in this city. So many willing people that you could come with the gospel message of Jesus Christ to and they would cling to you. Right now, so many of the migrant workers and so many of the people who are here in San Diego and Southern California that don't have citizenship, they're trembling, they're in fear right now. Especially because of what happened in the Supreme Court and last week. You overturned know, the executive decision that Obama decreed. People are afraid and then the prospects of Trump becoming president and his position against them. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a lot of desperate people looking for Jesus and you busy. I know you're busy. You got to go surfing, man. You got to go to your job, do your stuff. And you got to fix up. You got to remodel your living room. You got to save up for your next vacation. I know you're busy. So long as your passions and your desires and your affections are consumed by the earth, you have none for heaven. Because God won't play that game. People wonder, why is it that I'm not moved with compassion for the lost? Because you're consumed with your own, your own desires and your own wishes. And your own wants. And your own pleasure. And doing your own thing. It's time you begin to say, Lord, if this isn't for your service, I don't want it. God, if this isn't about your doing your work, I'm not in it. Suddenly you begin to recognize this outpouring of the Holy Ghost, this gifting of God, this wonderful realm of divine authority, this call to live a heavenly life, to no longer be of this earth, to no longer be of this world. Suddenly you begin to deal with the contrast that, uh, that has been made for us by comparison between our lives in Christ Jesus and everyone who followed Jesus and everyone who was following Him and seeking Him before He ever came. Did Elijah fit in? Give me a break. Did Elijah fit in? They described him as the hairy guy with a leather girdle. The guy who wears the, sco the coats, clothes made of goat skin and a, in a, in a leather girdle. The madman. That's not of this world. I know modern day Christianity said you're supposed to fit in he's supposed to look like smell like act like the world the only thing what you the clothes you wear does not define whether or not you look like act like smell like the world all those other things is surface things there's no bearing on it what defines whether or not you look like, act like, smell like the world is whether or not Christ Jesus is manifested in your life and lives through you in His power and His glory and His ministry. 
his compassion, his love, his mercy, his grace, his intercession. He ever lives to make intercession. Anybody's hearts join unto him. I can see them on their face, broken before God, bent before his will, crying out, Oh God, we know that you have given to us the stewardship. You've given to us the empowerment to change Southern California. You've given to us the ability to change this nation. Yes, sir. There is a different mentality on the East Coast. You know what's happening and in, in, in the Lord's opening up so many doors for us on the East Coast. Because th there is just a difference. There is just a different way and disposition towards God there. Far more numbers come. People come. They come crying out to God over the slightest little moving of the Spirit of the Lord. Satan is, as it were, fortified and and almost imprisoned is in so many respects the western United States you know Ann and I are getting ready we're getting we're getting ready to go to Iowa and then after we go to Iowa we're going up to Juneau Alaska and then after Juneau Alaska Abilene I mean uh, Aberdeen Washington and I, I'm telling you I just I want it I want to see the Lord take hold of my life and begin to use me to bust down this fortified wall that has been erected in the western United States against the moving of the Spirit and that finds its strength in the midst of the religious church. Because there's people not living under the fear of the Lord. They're not walking under Holy Ghost conviction. They don't walk in a place of tenderness and, and, and responsiveness to the Holy Ghost. They just stand upright with a, steel, a, steely, a blue steel face, a steely looking face in the midst of the anointing. There's nothing that causes them to bend. It's just nothing but weird. Come on, people. Come on now. I'm talking about a place where you've clean escaped the corruption that is in this world. I'm talking about a place where your life and your desires and your passions are so filled with God, Satan has no place to get in there. I'm talking about a realm where you're just so caught away in the glory of God and His divine purposes for you. You're, you're so captivated with the reality that He's called you not only to live and, and reign with Him and rule with Him throughout the ages to come, but to live, live with Him and reign with Him and rule with Him right now. You're just concerned about whether or not you're going to get a husband. Or whether or not you agree with what the pastor says. Or whether or not you get to do whatever it is you think you're supposed to do. It's about time you get broken and say, okay, I'm ready to take up my cross. I'm ready to be, I'm ready to lay down my life. Everyone in this place tonight, you run a risk of living out your life the same way to tomorrow when God has purposed there to be a milestone of change, a historical, a historical as it were, life marker in your life this weekend, now, this, this Sunday, now. Yes, There's things which the Lord spoke and declared this morning, what He's saying again tonight, what He's but he's passionately pleading people, pleading for people to do. Be careful. You may have fortified yourself against the anointing. Be careful. You may be living in a prison religion and don't even know it. Be careful. Be careful. Every wrong decision leads you into deception. That's what God says. And deception leads you into apostasy. That's what God says. It's about time you get broken. Suddenly we begin to recognize what He commanded us to be and what He's desired for us to be and what the will of the Father is for us to do and what the will of the Father is for us to be. And we become so desperate and so passionate that we can't live without it. And it doesn't matter what it takes. You, you go to bed with it at night. You wake up with it in the morning. You're overwhelmed by it. You touch heaven. You let heaven fill you. The compassion for the lost begins to overwhelm you. Now what happens? You begin to talk to people and, and the chains are broken. You're not coming in with your little religious spiel, your little Baptist spiel, your little human spiel, your little punch your religious time clock spiel of obligation to somehow invite somebody to come to church so that the numbers can go up on the board. Suddenly you understand, wait a minute. I've been given the ministry of Jesus Christ. I've been given the authority. The responsibility has fallen to me. The anointing is upon my shoulders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The people who cannot live without this, they get it. Everyone who can live without it, you don't get it. And I don't know that you make heaven. I told Ann this morning, I said, I want God to give me such a radical message on hell because people don't want to hear it. Satan's tried to shut it down. The Lord began to speak to me. In the first second, their jaw will be dislocated because of the scream of pain that will come from their life, their being. Within 10 seconds, they will be driven completely insane by the terror and the scream of others. And that's just the beginning of the hell. It's just getting started. And people think that they can neglect so great a salvation that they can somehow hang on to their life and change God's word. No, I'm going to live my own life. I'm going to find a place for God to fit in. I'm going to be conformed to the sociology and the culture and the structure of society. All my life is going to be about my career and all my life is going to be about my mortgage and my life is going to be about having all this stuff that all the people that are part of the design of the prince of the power of the air holds valuable. And I'm going to say that somehow God has now sanctified it and I'm doing his will by doing it. And so we have a powerless church. Somebody's got to break out. Somebody's got to begin to cry out. Somebody's got to begin to, to shout out the will of God. Somebody's got to begin to move and say no. Every similitude of being conformed to this world, I will deny it this moment. I reject and I denounce it right now, Amen. this very moment. Everything that looks like me living on my own life and holding on to my own life and doing my own thing, I denounce it right now and I reject it and I turn from it. And I recognize what it is, what, it, what God described it to be, what it really is. A denial of the Lord who bought me. A denial of the Lord who purchased me. A denial that I came to be His servant through His sacrifice of His only begotten Son. God risked all eternity to redeem you and me. You listen to me. He risked all that he ever created to redeem you and me because Jesus could have failed. He could have failed. And everything would have been lost. Satan would have gained the dominion. Because where Christ Jesus went, Father went, Holy Ghost went. You listen to me. Somebody said it couldn't have happened. Wait a minute. He was subject to like passions. In every way he was tempted as we are tempted. In every way he humbled himself. Became conformed to an earthly, fleshly existence. And he learned obedience. In every way he stood exactly like Adam stood. In every way. In every way. God risked everything for you. And I'm telling you, it's never even darkened the hearts of people. It's never even, it's never even approached the mentality of most people. What God risked to redeem us. And we want to rewrite the Bible. You're going to have to start tearing out pages of this book to continue to justify the life that you're living. You have to page. By the time you get finished tearing out the pages that do, you do not do, you will have very little Bible left. You'll have the stories of apostate kings in Israel. You'll have stories of a backslid in Judah. You'll have stories of men and women who refuse to walk with God. That's all you'll have left. The call to be strangers and pilgrims and sojourners. Dearly beloved, as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust at war against your soul. The call to come out from among them be separate, says God, you heavenly people. Your only purpose, our only purpose is to reach the lost. That's it. Our only purpose is to go everywhere and destroy the works of the devil. Our only purpose is to go everywhere, everywhere we do, everywhere we go, every, to turn people's hearts to God, to be salt that causes them to become thirsty. I'm saying to be salt to cause people to become thirsty for the things of heaven, to be light that shows the glory of his goodness and of his life. That's it. That's what we are called to be. That's what we're called to do. That's why we were born of heaven. That's why he poured out his spirit. This is not some kind of condemnation. This is the reality of God's call and God's judgments. Amen. We live in a society, a church culture that is full of itching ears and thus they found no power over sin. They found no power to live victorious, 
They've not found, they've not found no Pentecost that produces within them the compassions of God. The flow of the spirit of, of the living God where the sound of their voice sounds like thunders from heaven. Where their songs begin to bring the sweet movings of Holy Ghost conviction. Whose intercessions are united with the heart of the one who ever lives to make intercession for us. To have our hearts united with the will of the Father. I'm telling you right now, when it comes at the end of the day, it's all about doing the will of the Father. The lust, the world and the lust thereof will pass away. But he that does the will of the Father will abide forever. The abiding, the dwelling. To do the will of the Father. And by the time you get to that point in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17, my goodness he has already laid out the contrast. It is just so absolutely defined. It's clearly defined. There's light with no darkness in it. There's truth with no lie. There's complete consecration with no mixture. It's the slaves to the living God with no service to the self or to the human realm or to society. You go ask, go ask the African, why does he live in a mud hut with a dirt floor and a thatch roof? Because that's what his culture dictates. He has timber, good hardwood. That's what his culture dictates. Go ask the Westerner, why does he get a mortgage and make himself a slaveholder? To do its will, to bow before its will continually every month. To bring its finances to its altar. Because your culture, because it's our culture. Because mom and dad says that that's what's right and responsible. And if you don't do that, then you're not a good citizen. That this is what God wants to do to bless you. He didn't say that. He didn't say that anywhere. That's what he wants to do to bless you. He said, forsake it, leave it. Leave it. And he just leaves it there. It's not leave it with, hey, listen, let me tell you, it's going to be good for you. After you leave it, then he's going to tell you. You know, as Peter's standing there before the Lord Jesus, and, and, and he's dealing with the response of the rich man. He said, take everything. He says, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he says, what, is the, what does the law say? And he lays that out there and he says, I've done all these things from my youth. Jesus says, yes, you lack one thing. Take everything that you have because it holds a possession on your heart. It holds your interests. It has your affections. It has your desires. It has your passions. It's just where the place of your trust. Take it and go and sell it and give it to the poor and come and follow me and you'll have riches in heaven. He, didn't, he just left it right there. He didn't say, listen, here's what I'm going to do for you if you'll just do this. He said, just do it. And the guy started calculating, wait a minute. Look, God, look, look how old Abraham was when God said, you've got to leave it all. When you're 75 years old, my goodness, you've done it, man. You've done it. Now your whole life is in this. This is where you're from. God says, come out of Babylon. Come out to Babylon. Chaldean. Ur, the Chaldeans. Babylon, by and large. He could have had all the excuses, and it was just as challenging to him as it is to you. And maybe more. But he, so, he had an encounter with God, and he wanted that realm. I want that realm. I want that realm of love. I want that realm of joy. I want that realm of peace. I don't serve God because I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> and people need to know about it. They need to know that the wages of sin is destruction. If you sow to the flesh, you sow to the flesh. And God primarily defines that by and large is a human existence and it's all about your human life and it's about your human existence about what people call you and what you qualified yourself to be it's the pride of life it's the boast in your substance because pride in first Corinthians and first John chapter 2 verse 16 is a unique word it's the boast of your substance of what you have your possessions that's what it is he said it's, it's of the devil it's of the demonic realm it's of the prince and the power of the air it's not of the father it's not has anything to do with God. Who are you, Papa? Who are you, Father? 
What are you about? What do you look like? What do you want? What is your purpose? I'll show you in my only begotten son, whom we call Jesus. This is what pleases me. And I want you to understand, it's not option A along with option B and C. This is it. This is it. Jesus said, I always do this. I always do those things which pleases the Father. John chapter 6, I always do those things which pleases the Father. The prophet declared, Paul reflects on it. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Lord. Doing the will of the Father is our whole purpose. God came and delivered us from the power of death and deception and destruction and the, and the world system and the cosmos ruled by the prince of the power of the air so that we could live to do the will of the Father so that we could be taught of God the Holy Ghost so that we could be crowned with his loving kindness, crowned with his glory and with his honor, dressed with the beauty and the majesty of his splendor. And we're still wanting to be like somebody else down the street. We're still wanting to want, when am I going to get more for me? When is it that? I'm going to get more recognition. When am I going to get more stuff? Where can I have more, more things to consume in my own lust? There'd be no revival so long as the church is so imprisoned in, in the western United States. I hear rumblings of what the power of God is doing. I'll tell you right now, when Ann and I were in Jackson, Georgia, we felt the rumblings of God. I was sitting by a person who, uh, Philip Cameron, his, his parents Really, God used them in an amazing way, the Camerons in the 60s. We were around them when we were little. Roy Turner. I began to sit there and sing to Phil all Roy Turner's songs and the songs that his daddy and granddaddy did. And he's going, you're singing songs at 50 years old. Oh, the Holy Ghost was set your feet to dancing. I fell in love with a Nazarene. He's like, wow. He's like harmonizing as he knows them all. We're sitting there in that meeting that places holds about 2,000 people. And there were people that you could feel the faith in the house. You could feel the powers of darkness doing everything they possibly could do to keep any advancement going forward. And Phil said, I see warring angels all over this place. And that's really the battle that we're up against. He was totally right. We watched as the power of God fell there in Jackson, Georgia, in Abundant Life. I guess it's Assemblies of God, Abundant Life Ministry. I got a text this morning. I know that people are watching from there. We love you so much. So amazed at what all God's doing through you. What all God's doing in your midst. What you're allowing God to do. We're so blessed that we could be a part of that. You know, receive texts this morning. Messages this morning. The things that God did in that meeting. They're saying, you know, we're still living in the overflow of it. The power. I'm telling you, there's rumblings going on in the eastern United States. Heard about some movings of God in West Virginia's. You know, it's in other places what God is doing. It's about time in the Western United States. People are so preoccupied with their intellectual stuff. They're so preoccupied being conformed to this world and saying they're not. You know, something to be in the Western United States and, and, and speak and say they're not getting it. They're reinterpreting everything you say. That's why they're agreeing with you. They're making it fit into a life that I never defined. I was last night when a, a girl picked me up through lifts. When well, Ann and I got into town, we called Lyfts, the ta- which is a glorified taxi. And I began to minister to her. Taxi cab driving evangelism is great. They can't go anywhere and they got to listen to you. It's, it's actually better than airplane evangelism. You're paying them, you know. And I could just hear everything I was saying. I'm, 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 I'm sitting there waiting on the Lord. I'm saying, Father, how do I break through this girl? I could feel the religion. I could feel the religion. I, I didn't know. I said, Lord, is she Buddhist? I can feel the religion. What is it? What do I say? Somebody said, do you feel obligated? No, I'm overwhelmed with divine compassion for the lost. I know where she's going. I know what's going to happen. I know that God has placed me in charge, that I'm it. I'm it. You're it. We're it. If we don't go, they won't hear. If we don't do it, no one will see. If we're not going to be willing to be it, if we're not willing to go do it God's way, He's not going to share His glory. He's not going to mix it up. He's not going to blend it. We want Him to blend it. We wonder why we don't get filled with His affections because you're stuffed with your own. If you're really a Christian, if you're really saved, then you set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. 
that immediately brings a Holy Ghost move of God in your life and you don't sit there being unfruitful. Suddenly the power of God begins to move through your life. You show up at the grocery store, people come under Holy Ghost conviction. Where you show up at work, people come under Holy Ghost. You're not sitting around soulless. Are you listening to me? Powerless to reach the lost. More concerned about what, 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 what you're going to do on date night. I said, bless, Father, give me a Holy Ghost woman who never asked me for anything. Who's willing to go everywhere I go. Who's not pulling on me, saying anything about, I need to do this for her or do that for her. I told her the other day, I said, baby, I said, as far as I know, the, the best thing that we can do for your birthday and, and our anniversary is to, is to get this stuff done that God's told us to do. Can I give you a better birthday present than doing the will of the Father? I know that just doesn't even fit into your concept of living. I know you don't even have a file to put that in. But God wants to give you a file. He wants to make your whole life consume with this. She's like, absolutely, let's do that. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me the other day, said, no, 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 no. I want to go rest for a couple of days because we're so tired. I was so tired. I woke up yesterday before yesterday. My tongue was numb. <laughs> Tried to talk. <laughs> I'm numb tongue. I mean, everything was numb. My fingertips were, I mean, it was like, uh, you know, sleep deprivation. But you know what? It's great. How it was with, with some guys the other night, I, I, and I told you this, I just, and, he, and he said, so how much sleep have you been getting? I said, like one, two hours a night. How much sleep did you get last night? Well, we got one hour. And I was, you know, I had grace to do it. I mean, so I was very clear and aware and awake. I said, I'm used to it. He said, I never want to get, I never want to get used to that. No, no, no. Yeah, you do. There's something better than sleep. But you're never going to know it so long as you're spending all your time on yourself, man. So long as you're calling the shots and doing it your way. You're never going to understand what the one word in the Bible until you get broken before his presence. All you're going to do is redefine it. It's going to be intellectualized by you, and it's going to be something that somehow you don't know why you don't got it, but you want it, kind of. You're never going to understand a single word in the Bible until you get broken before him. And that is simply a, a response of our will to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to obey you. All I want is what you have for me. I want to encounter with you. I can't imagine that there could be anybody in this place there has ever been in this place who hasn't had an encounter with God. Many people had an encounter of God and they love darkness more rather than light because they enjoy the evil. They want to live their own life. When you have an encounter with God and you go back and you come have an encounter with God and you go back and you have an encounter with God and you go back and you have an encounter with God, you go back, your heart becomes hardened. Perpetual backsliding is a terrible thing. It's a terrible offense against the Almighty. I was sharing this morning. I just think it's, it's important to share it because it's just so strong in my heart. There's a person in, in, in was in the ministry, and, and they went out and they followed other people that left. People are going to do what they're going to do. God's sorting it out. They think that they opted out. No. All they did was show that them, prove to God they were not willing to obey him. That's all. <laughs> it's unfortunate. And this person brought a, a, an individual with them. And when they came to some meetings and the individual they brought was captivated. I just saw him. He was captivated. He came to me. After he'd come to three or four meetings, he said to me, this is what I've been looking for all my life. You know what I'm talking about. This is what I've been looking for all my life. I didn't even know this existed. This is so wonderful. The person that bought him said, I don't want it. I don't want that kind of consecration. And basically led him astray. And then sometime later, I encountered this individual in the hall upstairs. And I gave her the word of the Lord. And it came down, and it came down harsh, and it came down With the, with the hammer of heaven, with the warnings and the pleadings of God. I hope nobody came along 
and said, you just got to understand, Pastor Mark, he's just that way. Because you're part of the sin. You're part of the iniquity. If you did, if anybody did that, if you knew you ever do that, you're part of the sin and you're part of the iniquity. And the blood's on you. And maybe the judgment's on you. You better be careful. And I read it, I read it the right act. I said, here's what's going on in your life and this is what's going to happen. You've got to get this thing right. And nothing but a wall of offense went up. And recently I heard that this person's in a homosexual relationship now, apostasy. Decept the wrong decisions lead to deception will lead to apostasy. It comes in many forms. It comes in many forms. It comes in the form of the Pharisee who's hardened against everything that God says. Christ Jesus standing there and they say, he's filled with Beelzebub. Leaders, elders, deacons. People on the outside that look like, you know, that they're really right with God. Jesus called them whitewashed sepulchers that look good on the outside, but the inside of them is they're full of dead men's bones and all corruption. They, their habitation of worship is the place of the lizard and the spider. Speaking of every demonic thing, they hatch cockatrice eggs. Speaking of the demon power, he was talking about his people. This was. People want to self-justify instead of being conformed to the image, instead of bowing. I know, I know when people are sins of the Lord, there's a brokenness there, there's a tenderness there. There's not a stubbornness, not a defiance. The more you fight against the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's never, probably rarely ever, anyone who, as it were, consciously and knowingly fought against the Holy Ghost. It was the things of lies and religion and tradition that they bought into, that they served, that manifested as an act of resisting the Holy Ghost and fighting against the Holy Ghost because buying into the tradition and buying into the religion and buying into their ideology made everything that God was saying a lie. So that Paul said, you do just as your fathers did. You always resist the Holy Ghost. People, we're going to have to be, begin to contend for a faith that was once delivered unto the saints. We're going to have to say, wait a minute. If there's going to be Holy Ghost conviction, it's got to begin with me. If there's going to be brokenness, it's got to begin with me. If there's going to be an outpouring of God's glory, it's got to begin with me. I can't sit here all, you know, puffed up with my own imaginations of who I think I am. When, when, if you contrast and compare their lives. I mean, come on, people. You get yourself into the mix. You get yourself into the mix. You get yourself out there someplace where you're being now confronting the lost and the powers of darkness, then all of a sudden you see how powerless you are. You're going to do one or two things. You're going to give up because you're disappointed in yourself because your whole life is about you. Or you're going to go back to a prayer closet and you're going to touch heaven and say, Father, I must have more. The reality of it is, is very few people even do that. I mean, I can't even believe there's some people who aren't here tonight. I can't even believe they're not here. I can't even believe they're not here. I cannot even believe you sitting at home watching me on the web. You're not valiant. People are mighty to do their own things. They're valiant to do their own things. They're not mighty to do his things. And valiant to do his things. And valiant to seek the Lord. It's time that you and I look at Pentecost and understand what it is Jesus was talking about that he wants us to have. Look at the authority and the power and look at who John and look at who Peter and look at who James was and the contrast of their life that was already wonderful and amazing that they spent three over three years with the Lord Jesus and was endued with such ability and a power and saw so many signs and wonders and miracles that were not only wrought by Christ Jesus in their midst, but also through their own lives and through their own hands. And yet they stepped into a greater and a more valiant place. <laughs> James being so full of the Holy Ghost and so full of the power of God, all Israel, all the religious powers saw Everything that they held dear threatened by one man. They had to get him, put him to death quickly. 
He was shaking things up so intense. One of the sons of thunder. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't you want to be one of the sons of thunder? Don't you want a voice? You just want to, you could be content to be some little mealy mouth person with some crown by men with your little degrees and everybody bows before you and tells you how wonderful you are. All puffed up with what stuff you got. Think about it. Give me a break. I want to just paint a bad picture for you. You'd be denying the Lord who bought you. You his slave. You his servant to live his life. It's no patty cake religious service where you're going to come up here and, you know, give a little repentance and a little confessional, you know, <laughs> genuflex maneuver be, before God and think it's all taken care of. No, I'm talking, I'm calling you to a place where you die with Christ Jesus at Calvary. You know, will have no right to live your life and you have no right to come here if you're going to hold on to your life. You have no right. No right. You false witness. You are false witness. God's called us to a place of being crucified together with him, being buried by, with bapt, by baptism into his death together with him, to be raised up together with him. Wow. I know the first two parts don't sound very good. He took the painful part of it. He took the, he took the tough part of it. He took the, he took the sting out of it. He bore in his own body out of sins on the tree. Ha, <laughs> ha. There isn't any here. But he bore in his own body that which is represented by the communion bread. Bore our sins in his own body that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness. Might live out the life of God. Might be the heavenly people, strangers and pilgrims, those people that shine with the glory of heaven, those people who have the authority of the living God, those people that the great kings say, oh no, they know what you're saying in your bedchamber. They are the people of the Most High. Let us, let us contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Let us, let, us charge the, let us charge the realms of glory. Let us lay hold upon the mantle that has been given to us. You know, Elisha has the right response to the anointing. I want double of what you got. I don't want just what you got. I want double what you got. That means I doubly prize that which is in your life. We look at Jesus and we say, I want more, I want more than what you have. I so prize and so value that which is being described and that which is being revealed to your life of all of heaven, of all the Father's will, of all of his glory, of all of his majesty, of all of his splendor, of that power to set the captives free, to bring deliverance to a lost and dying world. I want more. I want double. I want greater than what you have. It's prizing and it's valuing it. Unfortunately, so many people live far beneath what he had, and they're so satisfied and so contented with their abominable self. Christ Jesus said, unless you deny yourself and take up your cross, you're not worthy of me. That's what he says. He says, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not worthy of me. This isn't about all the things that you've got to do and all the works that you've got to achieve. This is about a condition of your heart where all of a sudden you begin to face the reality that your affections and that your desires and that your passions and that your visions are more wrapped up in your earthly existence than in the will of the Father. It's about time to deal with it. And it's seen and declared by your deeds and by your actions. About who you are. What's going on in your life? You can't sit and read the Bible sincerely and study the Word of God and not get up and go out into the streets and go searching and seeking those who are lost. You cannot. Something went wrong with your reading. Somebody interrupted the Holy Ghost in the message. People want to sit around and study the Bible and want to become Christian sages. The question and answer, man. (laughs) <laughs> with more questions than answers. The biblical question, man. The bi- not the biblical answer, man. The biblical question, man, and answers, man. More questions than answers. It, 
It didn't take Philip long. He was one of the seven, you know. It didn't take him long. Get fired up. It didn't take Stephen long. Get fired up. You know, the day of Pentecost, just think about it. Yeah, look at the glory. Whew. Clothed in tons of fire, rushing mighty wind. Come on now. That's greater than what happened at Sinai. That's greater than what, that's greater than what Moses saw. When the glory of the Lord passed before him and Father unveiled himself to him and he was allowed to look at Father from the, uh, you know, from behind and see his similitude from the loins upward as a man and from the loins downward as a man. This is far greater because now Father has come to ha inhabit men. When we begin to believe it, you can see the response of a man who really began to believe it. John G. Lake is an example of a man who believed it. There is no sickness, no disease can be in my body. Put the plague on me. I'm the temple of the living God. It'll die as soon as it touches me. For God, I am filled with the very life of heaven. The very life of the Father dwells in me. I mean, see, somebody got it. And see, when you get a revelation and you get it, faith begins to work and you have power and authority. And nations are changed. Or right now in Africa, if you, just, if you say that there's going to be apostolic faith gathering, Apostolic Church Gathering, John G. Lake Group. You'll have 500, 600,000 people there overnight. They've got to bring in truckloads, <laughs> truckloads of, of food. They'll say if, if something like this happens, forget about it. There won't be any ability to rent anything anywhere around because it will all be being used by the gathering of one man, one man's faith, who's been dead. Who's been dead for more than What? For more than 60 years. What God would do through you, man. What God would do through you. You got to get broken. Brokenness will only happen when you see a neediness in your life. And all of a sudden your life becomes contrast between you and Christ Jesus. Between you and all that Father's made available to you. And you suddenly say, wait a minute, I cannot live without this. I cannot go on religiously, piously. With no glory of heaven being manifested in me. Then brokenness comes. Too many people are willing to go on with their pious acts. You can catch them right off the bat. They're pointing fingers of accusation against this one and that one. How bad the Catholics are. How messed up the Baptists are. How much false doctrine the Lutherans have. Just finger pointers. Intellectualizers tell you about everything God did before he ever, ever did it. Things God doesn't even know he did. <laughs> they start telling people stories of Father. You listen to Father saying, wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And they're just going away, just theologizing. And everybody's all cut away with it. Jesus, help us. Papa's on the front row here. He's more on the front row. He's inhabiting my life. You need to come under the rule. Those people who have the encounter with God, it's always, they're always in one category. They're very sensitive. Those people who are hungry for God are always submitted. They're always, it's just a, it's just a part of it all. They're always just laying everything before God. That's who they are. People who are self-reliant, they got it going on. They got all their own answers. Forget about it, man. They're so hard and calloused against God. They'll never have a move of God in their life. They are, they are, they the kingdom of God all by themselves. It's called the pride of life. Now, God's people are very sensitive, very tender, very desperate, very hungry. Out of that, they're very submitted. They're very yielded. They're desperate. They're needy. What have I got to do? Wait, hold on this. Look into my life. Look into my life. Father's here tonight. Floodlights of heaven shining upon you. There's many different types of reactions going on here. To him, not to me. To him. You may continue to know things after the flesh because you are fleshly. But those who have been made new creations, they know nothing after the flesh anymore. Though they knew Christ after the flesh, now they know no man unto the flesh. It's all a dynamic of a supernatural spiritual realm of things that God has ordained and put into place. Because they're a new creation and old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new and all things are of God. Father's going to sort it out. And I'm afraid in the sorting out, many people are going to be left out. People who've been saved six months, 
one year, two years, going to be doing the great exploits, have fire, have the Pentecost experience, have clothed in tongues of fire and a rushing mighty wind, while you sit around theologi- theor- theorizing about how God is and who he is, what he did and what he wants. Come on, people, don't run the risk tonight. Don't run the risk. Don't count your life dear unto yourself. What does it take to break the strongholds of your life? You want me to tell you what it takes to break the strongholds of your life? Your will. That's it. God has commanded every man everywhere to repent, to denounce this world, to denounce the things that belong to dishonesty. And I'm not talking about how honest or dishonest you are with men. I'm talking about how honest or dishonest you are with Father. He's commanded every man everywhere to repent. When we denounce this world and we come out from among them, we be separate where we're willing to lay hold of his life, where we've lost our life and we don't make our own decisions and we, our lives is about serving him and we belong to his kingdom and our lives is about serving the things that belong to his ministry. That which we have is substance only to take care of the ministry. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. The book of Acts revival, I mean, where everybody is like not an individual becomes, you know, wealthy to advance the kingdom of God. But the church does. And every man takes his possessions and he sells them and comes and lays them at the apostles feet. And no man calls anything which they have their own it belongs to the kingdom. Come on. It's here. We're, it's just this is wisdom. This is insight. This is what it looks like. This is the contrast. This is the comparison. This is the, this is the, as it were, the bar, the high water mark, the ability for us to understand, are we there yet? Are we doing what? Are, is, that, is that response of our heart come to the place where God can fill us? God's searching you out. You listen to me. He's searching you out. The fire of God is here. You listen to me. Papa's not allowing things that have been allowed, that have gone on to, to continue anymore. The chatter is shutting it down. You hear me? I've been here before. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. This is, this is his threshing floor. The wind of the Holy Ghost is blowing the chaff away. And the rebellious and high looks, and stubbornness, and unwillingness to comply and conform. It's true. Listen to me. Don't resist the Holy Ghost. Don't do it your own way. Don't say, well, my daddy hollered at me, and when you start hollering, I think about my daddy. You in prison to a demon spirit. And Papa wants to set you free, but your will holds you in prison. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, that keeps you from responding to God. You're just going to have to stop. Find out that your lunch time's more important than where you go eat. You can go take a walk down the sidewalk and say, Father, give me a divine appointment. The first person who passes by you is a divine appointment. Say, do you have a moment? Oh, yeah, it's going to challenge your life. Because right after it, you're going to be struck with what, because God is going to show you how much of that was you, even though you're willing to obey him, how much of that was you, because you haven't been touched with the fire yet. The power of the Holy Ghost hasn't taken hold of your life yet. You, you're responding to him in part, but you're still holding things back. And Father wants to show you that which you're holding back, so you won't hold it back no more. He's just waiting for you to surrender. He's waiting for you to recognize you're his. He's waiting for you to bring everything that you have in your decision, everything that you have in your desires, everything that you have in your affections and place them in him so that your eye may be single. goodness of God that leads men to repentance. 
the goodness of the Father that comes and calls us and leads us and calls us out, that draws us. Father comes and draws us. Jesus said, no man can come unto me unless the Father draw him. And the goodness of the Father is that he's drawing all men. He would that all men would be saved. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The goodness of God manifested in the grace of God that has appeared to all men. Teaching us. Pleading with us. God is pleading with the sons of men. In 40 years from now, many people that are sitting in this place, you will no longer even have a role to play. You will not exist in this world anymore. Some 30 years. You won't even exist in this world anymore. Your opportunity is fast being spent. The hourglass of time of your life, who knows where it's at? Von Gerald, who was here. Remember, remember Von, Von Gerald, who was here. In January, he just died. The doctor said it's like every organ in his body all shut down at the same time. Very unique. They called it some rare form of leukemia. Was it some rare? He just, his time clock went out. He just, every organ in his body shut down. His liver shut down. His heart shut down. His kidney shut down. Everything shut down. Everything shut down. It's, it's over. What well, about diagnosing some disease? Of course, you know, men got to try to figure it all out because they've written God out of the equation. And people are attached to that world. What you have the world that you're attached to, you're going to have to come out from among it because it's got a claw on you. It's got its tentacles in you. And until you come out from among it and sever your relationship, you're always going to be held in bondage to it. Listen to me. Too many people have tried to integrate God with this world system. You cannot do it. <sighs> Can you stop for a moment and just begin to imagine yourself in heaven? Imagine yourself in the kingdom of God. Imagine yourself having crossed over. What are you going to be doing? Will you be concerned about the bills? Will you be paying your mortgage? Will you be consumed with all these interests? Will you be worried about where you're going to go on vacation? Will you be upset about who took your seat? Whatever. No. Well, what you will be doing then is what God has called you to do right now. How is it that you can justify some other kind of living? Come now. Hearken unto me. I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. There's a beginning and a basis there, a foundation where we begin to understand how to even begin with God. And then Father takes it so much further. Hallelujah. He takes us. He takes it so much further than us just being made a new creation. That's how glorious enough that we're made, we're fashioned and formed in His righteousness and holiness. That we've given His glory and His purity. He tells us we are His dwelling place, His temple, His habitation. He looks at us in earnest, in earnestness says I want you to understand the inheritance that I have in you what I've vested in you I've vested in you that which will set all those others out there that I love desperately free as well. I've vested in you the power to overthrow what Adam let in. I've vested in you the ability to stand against sin and iniquity. I've vested in you the authority over all unclean spirit. I've vested in you the ability to stand against the iniquity when it comes to presents itself to you on your on your television screen, on your computer screen, on your iPhone, when you're in, in a place that no one else can see you. I've vested within you the ability to stand against it and cast it down and say you will advance yourself no further not only to stop it at that moment but to drive it out listen to me people listen God's calling you Father's calling you he's crying out to you he's pleading with the sons of man huh. 
somehow we have failed to realize who we are and what our responsibility is. We've never recognized that we are the hinderer of iniquity and our decisions are about either allowing God to be ex revealed through us and his exploits made known through us or allowing Satan that, that much more ground and that much more privilege to take over that many more lives as he runs us over to. To have our eyes of our understanding open so that we can see what his inheritance is in us and what is the exceeding greatness of his power that we right now are gifted with. We've got to have a different view of who we are and the value of our existence and the meaning of our life. It needs to be defined in Jesus Christ. You need to quit defining it in your culture. You've got to quit defining it in your sociology. You've got to quit defining it as your parents taught it to you from a little child, as your teachers valued it before you. There's teachers in here you need to repent for making history and mathematics and other things more important to little kids than seeking God and yielding to the Holy Spirit. You need to repent. You need to get right with God. You esteemed gods of this world of greater value than the only true and living God. You weren't willing to stand up against the system and say, we're praying we start this class and I'm praying insensitivity to the Muslim and to the Hindu and to the Jew and to the African and to the and to the heathen and to the agnostic and to the atheist for without my prayer they will spend an eternity in a place called hell we've been overrun people we've changed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ we don't preach it like he preaches it it's time to repent and say, okay, Father, this is a mile marker. This is an eternal marker. This is a life marker tonight in my, in my life. No more for me. No matter whether I'm rejected, whether I'm accepted, whether I'm hated, whether I'm liked, whether I'm blessed, whether I'm persecuted, whether I'm called a crazy man or a good man, man of God or whatever. I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to start talking to people about the death, burial, and resurrection. We'll talk about everything other than the power of the resurrection. I listen to people as they supposedly testify as a witness of the Holy Ghost and the witness of Christ Jesus. Give me a break. There's no God in that. There's no gospel in it. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The fact that you dead in your sins, that you unacceptable to God. And until you call upon the name of the Lord and you allow him and his grace to come and touch your life, you are destined to a place called hell. You're under the stronghold of demon power. Oh no, we wanna, we wanna, no, we wanna calm it all down. You know, Jesus loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Just humanized, ugly nonsense. No gospel in it. No, he's calling you to repent. He sent them out and told every, told them to go and repent. Jesus' message was he went everywhere commanding everyone to repent. His message was repent for the kingdom of heaven has come. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. It's his message. I'm amazed at how many people are so in the church that are so caught up within the sociology and with the structure and the system and the culture, believing that somehow government is going to change the spiritual climate and condition of this nation. Believing that through some kind of legislation they can lobby and somehow begin to change the whole agenda of abortion. No, it ain't going to change. Not till you change. Not till the church stands up. Not to the power of God's being unveiled with authority and power against all unclean spirits to shut them down and stop it. Not till the church is being revealed. Not till somebody begins to pray and cry out. Not till there's people filling the house of God every day, seeking God, coming together and saying, I don't care about money. I don't care about a job. I don't care about a reputation. My life is more valuable than what I wear. My life is more valuable than what I eat. My life is more valuable than what men kind of favor men give me. Jesus said, I always do those things which please the Father. And I purpose to live my life in him. Jesus has called us. This is the coming. And he says to us, he says, you come and you live my life. He says, you come and abide in me. You come and dwell in me. Literally, you come live my life. And I will live in you. 
He tells us there are proof. He doesn't leave us without proof. He says, if you live in me, if you live out my life, and my word lives in you, dwells in you, rules you, then whatever you ask, Papa will do it. Because you're the heavenly people on the earth who have been anointed, equipped with the divine power and authority of Jesus Christ to go and run Satan off every place that he has set up his power and his strongholds to destroy the works of the devil. That's how Jesus is manifested then and now. It's time. Time you confront how much anointing there really is in your life. How much of the life, measurable life of Christ Jesus is manifested in you. It's about power. Paul said, I hear all your doctrines. I hear all the statements you're making. I hear all the testimonies. I hear all the things you're saying over there. I'm not coming to hear what you've got to say. I'm going to come and test your power. It's powerful power. And it's just when he says that to those guys and those leaders and those people who influenced the church of Corinth, it was just like Elijah calling him out. Last night, or the other night, the anointing of the Holy Ghost was on Anne in a dream, and she was calling out people. She was saying, I'm calling you out. That's, that's what God does. He calls it out. He gives every man a space of time to repent. He pleads with men. He deals with men. But then there comes a time. And there ain't no escaping his view. And he stands in the midst of his church, not like many people have imagined him, but with his eyes are a flame of fire, and out of his mouth comes a sharp two-edged sword. Somebody said, oh, when you talk, you got a sword in your mouth. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know you meant it as an insult, but I take it as a compliment. Just like my master. Tart, sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. You know what he does with a sharp two-edged sword that comes out of his mouth? Slays the wicked. He stands with his priestly garments upon him. Stands with his kingly garments upon him. In a place called holy. Separated. Before the throne of God. Huh? Standing before the ancient of days. But he's standing in the midst of his church. And he's trying the works of his people. And he says, I've tried you. And I found that your work is not perfect. You better repent. You need to, you need to, people need to start. You need to get on your knees. Open up your Bible. And read Revelation chapter and Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3. And stay on your knees. And say, search me, O oh God. Then read it again. Suddenly you're going to begin to see the real Jesus. Not a make-believe, not a religious one, not one ideology, ideological one that you created, that people have created in a post-apostate church culture. Christ Jesus is calling you. He's calling this church. He's calling you to go lay down your life. He's calling you to go to seek and save, to seek and save that which is lost. He's calling you to put your reputation on the line. He's calling, he's calling you to get out of your comfort zone, get out of your living room, to get out of your love of ease, your love of comfort. Oh, it cost me too much. I'm tired. You're tired because you're oppressed by a demon spirit. You start moving out with God and you'll get grace to suddenly be healed and you won't be tired no more. You won't be diseased anymore. Are you listening to me? I'm tired. Can't come to me because I'm tired. Jesus. Come on, people. Let's labor for the master from the dawn to the setting sun. Let's go talk of all his wondrous love and care. Let's go shout him. Let's go proclaim his deeds among the people. Huh? Let's make known his name among the people. Declare his deeds into the nations. Hallelujah. 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 We right now in a time here in Southern California where the nations have come to They've come to San Diego. They're everywhere. They're all over Balboa Park. They're all over all these various different places. Just hanging out. You begin to fall upon your face and say, Okay, Father, in the next 30 minutes, I want you to empower me because when 31 minutes comes, I'm going in your name. Father's going to go, What? What? He's going, What? What, did I, did I hear you right? 
you, you, after so long a time, you're going to do what? You get up in 31 minutes and you begin to go. You're going to begin to see something happen. You're going to begin, all of a sudden, the working of the power of God is going to begin to move in your life. Huh? You're saying, okay, Father, thank you for granting me boldness because now I'm going to go to the person that I've sat by for the past 20 years and I'm going to tell them about Jesus. I'm going to tell them about their need to get right with God because an eternity in, called in the lake of fire is awaiting them if they're going to reject Jesus. And I don't want it to come off in any way but you. I, you've got to say it with your power, with your Holy Ghost conviction so it's not taken wrong. If suddenly you begin to take the position of Mary, simply say, whatever he says, do it. Whatever he says, do it. Whatever he says, do it, and then the miracle's going to happen. Whatever he says, doesn't matter what he says. It may be wild. It's probably going to be wild, but whatever he says, do it. If you can hear him talking to you, he's, he wants to talk to you tonight. He wants to bring a consecration in your life. He wants to bring a commitment in your life. You know, I was in, when I was in, you know, I was in India, you know, the in, powers of darkness came to me one night and said, you're going to, when you get to Kashmir, they're going to kill you. When you arrive in Kashmir, you're going to get killed. And you know, for a minute, you'll sit there, wait a minute. You start second guessing, start questioning. Am I doing what God's telling me to do or I'm getting ambitious and stepping out? But see, when you know the voice of God, you know also the, the voice of the enemy. And then it doesn't matter. So, okay, whether I live or whether I die, Father, I'm gonna obey what I'm gonna obey you. And you told us to go into all the nations, preach the gospel. So that's the end of it. So the same thing goes on with you, with people that are in your workplace. You never told them. You never told them that an eternity called the lake of fire awaits them if they reject if they reject the gospel. That it's not God's will that they perish. Christ. This is the whole reason Christ Jesus came. You never came to them and said, give me five minutes. I want to tell you the most important thing you've ever heard. You've got to listen to me. How long have you known me? First of all, I want to tell you, I want to repent to you that I've sat here silent and risked your eternity by not telling you before. Come on now. You don't want to have to walk away from that thing saying there was less of an anointing than there needed to be, but probably you will. You might. I pray that you don't. But if you begin to get into the throes of this thing, it, will come, it won't be too long. And you'll be going back to your prayer room crying out to God, Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I have to have that power. I have to have that authority. I have to have that anointing that you said that we were supposed to have, that you gave to us, that you granted to us. Lest I misrepresent you. Father, I've not seen your results. I stood in Cuba in a place where both the pastors... But the, 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 the man and the wife, pastor and Mr. Pastor and Mr. Power pastor is all both medical doctors. And I looked outside and there stood a person with no hands and I felt the faith of God. I said to the person, I said, your hands will grow. Hey, I said, your hands will grow. I felt such faith. His hands will grow. It'd be a sign and a wonder to the nation of Cuba. I'm going to go pray for Castro. I'm going to pray for Fidel. I'm going to tell you, I spoke to a hun over 100 pastors, a historical gathering, over 100 uh, pastors and leaders, 15 different denominations. And I said, I've come because I want to see Fidel Castro make heaven. And most of them dropped their head in shame because they could not even imagine that. Their concept of him was completely, completely different because of the culture that they lived in. The doctor got up and said it took a young man, it took a man, it took a man from America, something like that is what he said. It took a man from America to come here and tell me that my attitude and posture and disposition before God has been wrong. I was, was, we were with him for like five minutes, and he's already getting it. I'm thinking, praise God. It's anointing really does work. When people aren't used to me, the power of God will set in. Come on, man. You can't sit and just listen to the voice of God and encounter God over and over again and just continue to wake up the next day and go ahead and live your life with no changes. And it's going to cost you something. It's going to 
cost you something. I'm going to tell you a beautiful thing about it. You break past the demonic hindrance, and you'll break in to a glory room of heaven. You break past the fear and the anxiety and the sense of rejection and discouragement and disappointment. You break past it. I'm telling you right now, it's busting through a wall of demonic stronghold to step over into a realm of divine glory and a mantle of heaven. You know, I, I, got, in that, I got in that car. I got in that car last night, that lift car. And my, and now we're so tired because we came from five weeks running wide open from Norway to India to Kashmir to Africa to Cuba. We got to the ranch. We, I, what I, I stopped working sometime every night around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. We just went in wide open. Just get up in the morning, just numb. Say, okay, here we go. <laughs> just numb. Put me on the dozer. Go. And so we come, we tired, we retired, come back. We just tired. I got in, I, you know how it is. You tired, you just want to be quiet, right? You're tired. Sit there. But something's greater than my own bodily, physiological needs. Something's stirring. I'm sitting in here with a person that unless God works a miracle, she will spend an eternity without God in a place called the lake of fire. There's only, she's under the stronghold of a demonic power. She's enslaved to the enemy of the Most High. Christ Jesus paid such a high price for her to be liberated. Father, how do I talk to her? How do I break through? I sit there. How do I break through, God? How do I break through? I said, who are you? My name is Angelica. Angelica, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Oceanside. Where do you live now? Encinitas, what are you doing? Oh, I'm in school at Cal State San Marcos. I want to be this and I want to be that. And I said, has anybody ever told you about the gift of God? And I knew, I knew, I knew, Father, she's going to, she's going to, she's going to reinterpret it, everything I say based upon what she believes and what she knows. And Father, I want to break through that religion. I want to break through that yoke of Catholicism. I want to break through that wrong models and that falsehood. How do I break past it? Give me that word. Let that sharp word, let that word from heaven that divides asunder joint and marrow, that is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Let that flow of heaven's glory, that wonderful Pentecostal thing where the Holy Spirit begins to speak and no powers of darkness and no deception can stand against it. Satan's power cannot work against me or stop my words. I have this authority. When you begin to do what God's told you to do, you can have what you want because what you want are the nations. What you want are lost souls. When you begin to move with God, He's going to give you an understanding and a word of knowledge to be able to break off that yoke. You're going to find out in a very practical way how you turn people from Satan to God because Satan cannot stop the speech that's coming out of your mouth. And I could feel, start, I could feel those words slapping back at me. But we come in and we come, we're staying with it. Let me tell you again. It's not about religion. It's about the power of the Holy Ghost. Stir our hearts, Lord. That we're never too tired. We never have an excuse. That our passions and our affections and our visions, that our purpose is all in you, consumed by you. I've been, I will not deny the Lord that bought me. That is, to not, that is not to deny a historical Jesus. That is not to deny a religious Jesus. That is to deny his ownership of our life that we no longer live. For we thus judge if one died for all, then all are dead, that we should henceforth no longer live unto ourselves. You need to grab a hold of it because that is the reality. And if it's anything different than that, you're out of what he brought you into. He delivered us and saved us from a place of death and darkness and destruction to be able to live this heavenly life. To be able to live his life. Because prior to that, you're either living the life of God or you're living the life of a demon power. God has come to deliver us. And the lives of demon powers take on many forms. They look like Pharisees. All very 
honest and ethical and full of integrity and responsible and oh they look really really good and pure and pious but God says their place of worship is the home of the spider and the lizard they hatch they hatch cockatrice eggs they're full of dead men's bones and all corruption God sees things very differently than we do all that matters to him is a new creation a new creature that lives the life of Jesus. Some of you are going to have to get up in the morning and have to walk away from the life you've been living and start living his life. And you might go tonight, you might be sad. You might go away sad. And that's really sad because you don't have much possession, but it's still very valuable to you. I mean, it'd be one thing if you had a couple of billion and you got to walk away from that in the morning, but all you're walking away is from a couple of pennies. Sit. And by reckoning the real true value of heaven and eternity, it's a little pile of dirt. It's a little pile of dirt. And it's such a high price for you to trade in to have his life and his glory. Oh, how, how, how much more could we devalue what he's done? Whew. Our eyes are going to have to be open. Holy Ghost conviction is going to have to begin to move in our lives. The response of our hearts going to have to become placed in the, in, in the right position. And I want to actually say conditioned. Because maybe God, we heard God speak and we begin to train ourselves in the wrong things. We weren't listening to the Holy Spirit's training. We begin to train ourselves in the wrong, wrong things. And we called it God. That's what the Pharisees did. That's what Sadducees did. That's what the Herodians did. That's what the Jews do. That's what Christians do. Is that what you do? Is that what I do? Is it me, Lord? Hear the tenderness. Hear the affection. Examine me. It's John. Who loved the Lord. He called himself that he never dreamed himself, you know. He called himself the disciple that loved the Lord. It's beautiful. He's hidden. He wanted to be hidden, Jesus. He was so humbled at the reality that Jesus wanted to be hid away in him. I want to reveal him. Jesus is like, John, I want to reveal myself through you. He's like, What? No, I want to be hid away in you. I want to reveal myself through you. Jesus loved to be hid away. Did you notice that about him? Don't tell anybody. I'm going to work a great miracle for you, but don't tell anybody. Jesus, in, from a worldly perspective, went into popularity. He couldn't be hidden away to do the will of the Father. Now Peter says, oh, you're going to be great. He says, no, I'm not. I'm going to give myself a ransom for you. They'll take the Son of Man and they will crucify him. But on the third day, he will rise again. The Lord looks at you and me. I mean, the one thing I liked about what Hollywood did with that new movie, The Son of God, there's one line that I said, okay, this is worth it. This is worth it. Peter says, so what are we going to do? Jesus said, we're going to change the world. That's it. He said this to me. I've heard him say it to me. He wants to say it to you. As soon as you hear him say it, you're done. You're done. You don't have no, I didn't have anybody telling me get at the streets. I'm, I was out there. I didn't have anybody tell me to go to prayer. I, was, I didn't have anybody tell me to, to do the things that, I would I fire God's on the inside of me. I heard him say, let's change the world. I didn't need anybody's approval. When the fire, when you have an encounter with God and you allow him to open up your eyes so you can begin to see the inheritance that he has in you, the authority that he's vested in you to drive back the powers of darkness, to set the captives free, to turn men from darkness to light. Jesus.
God is holy. <laughs> See, I just too low. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me the right, give me the right tune. Hallelujah. God is holy. And he made holy. God is holy and he made me. <laughs> I apologize. God is holy and he made me holy. God is righteous. And he made me righteous. God is almighty and we worship him alone. Alone. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm in him and commanded me to be our oh, God is holy and he made me holy and God is righteous and he made me righteous God is almighty and I worship him alone alone I in him and he's in oh I'm in him and he commanded me to Sandy come here Sandy come here come here James you come come here for family come girls come girls there's a mantle on you And what happened is she was only reminded of it two weeks ago. Do not look back because if you do, it will diminish. It will diminish. Do not let it diminish. Do not let it diminish. I looked at you and I saw Cuba. I saw Cuba. There's a fire of God burning right now in the nation. There's a fire of God burning in the nations. The nations are calling me. The nations are calling you. Father, and I thank you that the same anointings upon James and upon the girls, that the price will be paid. Now, in the name of Jesus, you repent for deprioritizing God. You repent. You repent for making your sleep more important than seeking the Lord. You repent for decisions that you made. You get yourself back in line with God. I mean, I see the turn. I see the turn. But at the same time, we can't just ignore what decisions that we made that were wrong. If we begin to go after our own vision, our own passion, our own money, our own career, our own thing, our own thinking. Come on, James. Anybody's going to spit in the eyes of a blind man. Come on! Anybody who's going to spit in the eyes of a blind man and say, how do you see? And he says, I can see more. And he spits again. Hallelujah. Doesn't need to waste his life in a career working for some kind of money to pay some kind of mortgage. To fit in with the rest of the world. To walk out the world system that was designed by the prince of the power of the air and deny the Lord that bought them. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on. Oh, God is holy, and he made me holy. Oh, God is righteous, and he made me righteous. God is almighty, and I worship him alone. Alone, I'm in him. Sing it with me over there in Oregon. Hallelujah. Come on now. I'm in him. And he commanded me to be. God is holy. And he made me holy. 
Oh, God is righteous, and he made me righteous. God is almighty, and I worship him alone. Oh, alone I'm in, and he's in me. I'm in him, and he commanded me to. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm in him and commanded me. You know, Sandy, when she heard I was going to Cuba, she says, You're not going without me. And I wasn't so certain. I was like, I don't know. She hadn't been coming to the meetings regularly. I haven't seen her passionately pursuing God. I don't know. She kept after me. She sent text. I'm going. She sent a text. I'm going and I'm paying my own way. I'm like, mm. I was starting to hear some passion now. I'm hearing something more than just something that is a man thing. I'm going. You're not leaving me behind. Is that in you yet? Has it started in you? Has it started in you yet? I'm going and you're not leaving me behind. I'm paying my own way. I'm sorry I did this thing. Then I woke up one morning, heard the Lord say, Sandy's going to be going. Because he's going to look at your passion. He's, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're willing to live without what God has given, shame on you. Shame on you. But you're not going to have it. We cannot be willing. We cannot be willing. What does it cost? Does it cost me laying in bed at night without going to sleep saying, oh God, what will it take to see the arms grow out, to see the eyes open up, to see your glory fall upon every person so that not one single person is able to sit there with a dry eye. Not one single person is able to continually redefine the message from heaven based upon their own experience and their own religious ideology. What does it take, Papa? I'm willing to pay it. Oh, God, what does it take? Oh, God, I don't care about anything. I just got to be used by you. Come on now. That will only happen when you don't have a desire and affection for the, I'm going to tell you right now, that will only happen when you don't have any more desire or affection for earthly and worldly things. Until then, it will not happen. It will not happen. You will continually be barren. Barren. Barren of divine desire. Barren of a Holy Ghost compassion. Barren of a divine fire. Barren of the life and majesty of Christ Jesus. He will not mix it. He will not mix it. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God in your own self-interest. Mammon is a very new, unique word. It was literally transliterated from the Greek. It's just a Greek word. It has a whole bunch of meaning. And it's very, it's very similar to the meaning that we read in second i mean first john chapter 2 and verse 16 concerning the pride of life the boast of your own substance your substance you cannot serve god and your substance you cannot serve god and mammon it's far more than, it's far more meaningful than, than wealth or riches, because that is very. <laughs> easily to easy to define based upon your situation. It's very relative. It's your substance. See, I'm gonna tell you what's happening in Sandy. I'll tell you what's happening in her. 
Souls are bigger to her now, starting to become bigger to her than her children. She loves her children. Why? Because it's the Holy Ghost. When that happens, now you can take your children, you can thrust them into the care of God. Souls are becoming bigger to her than her job, bigger to her than her finances, bigger to her than her the stuff, her comforts. Papa wants to do it to you, but you got to start crying out, oh God, I'm going. You're not leaving me. You're not leaving me behind. I'm going. I'm going. Do you need me? Do you need me? I'm going. I had another translator coming. I had a guy who's been going to Cuba for six years, preacher. Well received there. I need a translator. But God needed Sandy. God needs you. He's got an inheritance in you. Why don't you start seeking him for that? Why don't you stop misinterpreting, reinterpreting, redefining, saying, oh, I got to do it based upon what this man says or what that man says or what this money says or what this desire says and what this purpose says and what that vision says that are all earthly and worldly. God's calling you out. He is. He's calling me out. He's calling Ann out. He's telling us, step up. Quit counting your life dear unto yourself. Walk with me. God says to us, He says that we're supposed to walk by faith. We're supposed to live by faith. That is where we are totally detached from every earthly concern and every earthly provision and the arm of flesh. And we don't ever make a decision based upon what we're going to get out of some kind of a paycheck. What we're going to get out of some kind of financial system. Satan designed that. Come on, people. I'm trying to break off the yoke from you tonight because it's on you whether you realize it or not. I know many people are ignorant. They've been deceived. They made wrong choices and so they're deceived. And then there's nothing so, so much of a blind spot as deception. I'm breaking that thing tonight. I'm letting the flood, we're praying the floodlight of heaven shine upon your soul. And you recognize where you're making financial decision is about you and about what makes you comfortable and what makes it, it all work out for you according to your design and your fashion and what you plan for your life. Father's ready for you to say, I'm putting it on the altar here tonight. Once again, if Abraham was not completely detached from all earthly concerns and desires he would have never sacrificed Isaac he loved Isaac dearly but he loved father more he knew father he trusts father he was walking in the realm of faith thus he is an example of the model and the father of faith he shows us that the ability in relationship with God to thrust all things to the care of the father to thrust it into the care of the father to send it out and thrust it into his hands to cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. To humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, so he may exalt you in due time. And people want to be exalted, and they never humble themselves. They've never been willing to walk out the life of faith, the walk of faith, the righteous live by faith, an absolute trust, an absolute confidence in God, where that you take no concern for what you shall wear, or what you shall eat, or what provision you shall have, but you let God be the one who decides it all. Think about it, people. Go look at Abraham. Go look at Abraham. Make sure you're not acting like Adam. <laughs> Make sure you're acting like Abraham. Go, go revisit Jesus. Go talk to him tonight. Talk to him right now. Let him speak to you. Let him show you how much, how much fun it is to walk in the Spirit, to live out the heavenly life, to walk the life of faith. To walk in the Spirit is to walk in faith. To walk faith by faith, day by day, with absolute, with absolute abandonment to Father's provision, for God, the Father's protection, for God's perfection. And oh, how He'll take care of you. The disciples said, after the rich man went away, they said, but we've left everything. We've left everything to follow you. He says, no man 
He said, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't seek me. You don't come and obey me and follow me without a reward. I tell you right now, nobody's left everything for my name's sake and for the kingdom except they will receive a hundred more in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. I'm telling you right now, I'm walking away. I'm walking away. I'm telling you, I'm calling you right now. God's calling you out. Walk away. Today, tonight. Be willing to become totally detached from your affections upon this world. Your affections and your desires that are wrapped up in uncertain riches. Your affections and your desires that are wrapped up in an earthly existence which has no value and no meaning. You were redeemed to live the life of Jesus Christ. You were redeemed to live the life, the heavenly life, the life of the Spirit. God is holy, and he made me holy. God is righteous, and he made me righteous. God is almighty, thy worship alone, alone. God says, I am El Shaddai. I am the Almighty. Walk before me and be perfect. Peter likens their life into the same life that Abraham chose to be a stranger and a pilgrim. He would not give himself the opportunity to somehow become integrated with the system of the world. He would not give himself an opportunity to somehow be conflicted or compromised. He said, no, I'll dwell in a tent. I'm, gonna, I'm seeking a kingdom whose builder and maker is God. I'm not going to have... I'm not going to trust in uncertain riches. I'm not building myself a house. I'm not building myself a castle. I'm not building myself a city. I'm not going to in any way conform to the sociology around me. He's an example. He's calling us. Paul said, look at Abraham. Romans chapter 4 said, look at Abraham. Come on now. We theorize all that we can do in faith. We try to imagine how that we can have the same response to God as Abraham just in terms of calling those things which are not as though they were and obtaining such miracles and moving and such signs and wonders but without the commitment and without the consecration they have to go together I have to leave I have to leave where I'm at so Father can show me where he wants me to live his word is all about us coming into his provision. His word about all about us coming under his protection. His word is all about us coming to him. He's saying, come here. That's what his word is asking us to do. He's saying, come here. Anybody who's on my side, come up here. Come over here. That's every one of his words. Every sentence in the Bible is about you and I resolving ourselves or resigning ourselves to be clean escape from everything that belongs to the demonic and everything that belongs to death and sin and sickness and disease to come over into the realms of his divine grace and his divine goodness. For he's a provider, a protector, a perfecter. Start obeying God. Start honoring his word. Start saying, okay, Lord, what's the nation? What's my nation? What's my nation? Okay, okay, Father. Okay, Father, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to start, I want to start understanding what it means to walk in love. I want to feel the compassion. Lord, I don't want to be just some kind of empty dud anymore. I don't want to be just some kind of blank, you know, when it comes to a compassion and a burden for the lost. Lost. I'm not going to be consumed with my own need anymore. I'm going to understand how to get on my knees like praying I did and say, oh, God, Southern California are bust. Oh, God, give me that, my family. Give me my friends. Give me my job. Give me my community. Give me my city. Give me my state. Give me my nation or I die. It's about getting a hold of God and saying, look, I'm going to take up whatever I've got in terms of an opportunity, and I'm going to make full effect of my anointing and the calling upon my life. That means Bonanza. That means Klamath Falls. That means Lakeview. That means get up and go. That means begin to strategize. That means begin to say, okay, we can take this to another level. Hallelujah.
Father, I'm going to get down on my knees and pray and for 30 minutes. I'm going to seek you and I'm going to believe you that you're going to anoint me. Because in 31 minutes, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for you on your behalf and I'm going to represent you. <laughs> and I want to do it accurately. And so I'm asking for your fire now. I'm asking for your glory now. I'm asking for your power now. Jesus. Deborah, you just obey God. You obey, you obey the direction of the Lord. You give yourself to that piano. You give yourself to be trained by God. You, you hover over the thing. You begin to learn from other people who have, who have learned how to flow in the anointing. There's many. There's many. Learn how to flow in the anointing. And Father will begin to release a gifting through you and it'll grow and it will mature. And out of that, it'll be a springboard for so much more. God has placed upon you from a child a gifting and anointing to prophesy, to declare His word, to speak forth out of the realms of the anointing, out of the realms of the supernatural power that only the Holy Ghost can give. But it's got to become more valuable to you, and I believe it has, than anything else. To where it consumes your life. That's what makes the difference. And you know, it makes what make a difference. You could just you can show up at the meeting, and that's the only time you even you, you come to the meeting, you got your instrument, that's the time you practice as well as the time you perform. And that's performance. You know what I'm saying? That's performance. That's all that is. There's because there's not gonna be much anointing there, because you're gonna labor over it. It's you talk about that's not even second best. That's not even nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because God, you're getting what I got to give you. Are you listening to me? It's time you start giving God your best. If you've got responsibilities in here, especially if it has to do with the music and the sound, my goodness gracious. You hold it. It makes all the difference. The crystal and, and that everybody learned the song. It made all the difference makes all the difference that there's people giving to Holy Ghost worship because I'm not going to stand around and listen to some open up the can of music. I'm, I'm not a can eater. I'm not a can kind of guy. It's got to be something. It's got to be something that you labor over. I've heard people sing old songs that were written 200 years ago, but because they've labored over it and they allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come and give themselves to the ministry of the Spirit, they can sing a 200-year-old song, The Glory of Heaven Falls. Hallelujah. You're going to have to learn how to give yourself if what you do is right now, if all you understand and know about your responsibility and relationship with God is to give yourself to prayer and intercession, then do so until that you begin to pray and the intercession falls and the glory of God begins to fill the house. What is you, you have to understand what is your calling? What are you doing right now? What has God given you to do right now? Not outside the church, in the church. Because that's going to be the springboard of what's going to happen outside the church is the context of relationship that develops the outpouring. It's the manifestation of Christ Jesus to you that is ultimately the manifestation of Christ Jesus through you. It's the endowment of the power of the Holy Ghost that causes a river to flow out. The streams of God that make glad the city of God to be expressed through our lives. That's what we're about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, tonight we just thank you so much that your forgiveness and that your mercy and that your long suffering is here with us, hovering over us, pleading with us. May there not be one single person in this place tonight that's not willing to go ahead and embrace the riches of your goodness, the riches of your glory that has been freely poured out. I know what will happen to you. I know. And I don't have to take you, honestly, I don't have to take you on the foreign field. If you leave, if, if, if you would just hook up with me more in this meeting, the riches of God would get a hold of you. If I took you to another, if I took you outside of this place and you went to a meeting with me, wherever, to another place, and you were there in that meeting and you were ministering alongside of me, you hooked up with me in a different kind of way, you'd never be the same. Suddenly the thing would be birthed in your heart. 
But God wants you to do it right here. Hello. You don't have to go to some other meeting with me. But usually that's what happens because if I take you out of your comfort zone, if I take you out of what you think that you're supposed to be doing, the way your behavioral patterns have been have been set up for you, and I put you in a strange environment, and now you're over in a place and you're with me and you're serving me, something happens. Something happens. You begin to you begin to start flowing in the realms of the ministry of the anointing. You go, oh, I like this. Oh, your eyes begin to be opened by the doing, and you understand your inheritance in Him, and you get spoiled, you get ruined. It can happen right here. God wants it to happen right here. Hallelujah. You got to change. Yes. she pulled on Monday. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you know, Pastor Mark has been saying a lot about that there's, that he's doing, that there's just the work of the few and that there's just so many out there. The first time that he said that, it hit me so hard. And I just went to my prayer closet and I said, Oh, Father, transfer me from the many and make me part of the few. I want to be part of the few. Make me part of the few, God, to go to the nations. But he has to be a passion of prayer. It has to be a passion of prayer, Father. Make me part of the few. It's time. It's time. Oh, God, make me part of the few. I don't want to be sitting there. Part of this many. No more. No more. I no longer want to be part of the many. Father, transfer me to the few. I want to be part of the few. That's all it takes right there. That's all it takes. The other night I became so under, overwhelmed. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. And heard it. Forgive me for overcommitting to Cuba. Forgive me for overcommitting to Kashmir. I'm one person. I'm worn out. I can't do it. I'm looking around. The laborers are few. Huh? I said, I'm done. I'm focused on just one or two things. Well, I repent. Because everybody around me, they're saying, you got to slow down. A friend of mine, running real hard, had a stroke the other night. A close friend of mine at the beginning of the year, keeled over with a heart attack. You're saying, look, you got an earthly body, you got a physical body, you got to take care of it, you got to slow down. Well, if I slow down, it won't get done. So either I'd slow down. And somehow preserve my life. Or continue to run passionately. And I'm going to. Until I bust the thing open. And a flood of laborers come in. The Lord seated me as a very young child for the nations that have never heard the gospel. And it's just such a blessing and so amazing and so overwhelming to know, have a divine strategy of how to get into those nations. But there's so much work to do, so much things that have, so many things that have got to be done, so many things that have to be put together in order to do it. But praise God for the miracle. Praise God for the miracle, okay? You guys are going to quit looking at me like I'm about to kill over dead, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. I need a little prayer and intercession over here. I know they're trying to give me wise counsel. You know, Dad, honey, listen, please. Papa's going to take good care of us. 
we're going to see more laborers raised up. It's happening. It's happening. Amen. That's, hallelujah. I was wondering. I thought that was her. I felt because I heard the anointing. I didn't hear her. I didn't hear a baby. I heard Holy Ghost. It is happening. You know, it's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. Is we're going to these churches. I'm just looking at these people. I'm just seeing all these young people. They're like lit up. You know, lit up. And I'm not going. I'm not going to violate anything and and invite them. I mean, when I was at 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 uh, Phil's, I never said one thing about what we're doing. I just said about everything about what they're doing. Because I'm. I'm going to give myself to building what they have. I go to these various different churches, and this Lord's opening more doors. I see people lit up with a fire. They, you can see that they want to go. They want to leave and go with me. You know, it's like you know, kind of. You just up. I never die. You serve in your ministry, serving your church. Wow, the power of God. Oh, I mean, I hear something from heaven I never heard. You know, kind of. Thing. I hope tonight you're hearing something from heaven you never. I hope tonight that you're responding to the Holy Ghost. You're, you, you are it. You're it. If you're, be, if, if you're tonight, if you're willing to begin to walk the walk of faith, to begin to live by faith, everything you do is by faith. Some of you tonight, you're going to have to quit living by your parents' dictate. You're old enough now. I tell people all the time, you'll hear me, I'll give people counsel. Obey your parents until it comes to a place that you're not, it's violating your obedience to God. When you've got to obey your parents and, and it results in you disobeying God, don't do that. You don't have to do that. Obey your parents in every way you can until it comes up to the point where you have to disobey God. Then forget about your parents. Obey God. You hear me? You hear me? You say that you're under the yoke and you're a indentured servant for indentured servant for four years. No. Gotta pay your ransom. You say that you're under the yoke and you're an indentured servant for 30 years. No, gotta pay your ransom. Sell while the market's still good. Some of you may be indentured servants. Well, I only got 10 more years on my mortgage and then we're set to go. Set to go where? Set to go where? Oh, then we're just going to be freed up. No, you're not. You're going to be shut up. It always works that way. When you got it all worked out, and you all ready, it's done. Watch. God is in charge. He converges all things according to His will. You watch it. And whatever you sow, you will reap. And if you sow for your own means and your own circumstance and your own provision, that is what you will reap. You will not reap a divine inheritance. You will not reap a divine inheritance until you risk everything and you go out and complete trust and abandonment. I was weird just with people on the mission field, every one of them. They could be anything they want to be. They could be doctors. They could be lawyers. They could be whatever. They could have houses. They could have, all, they're out living. In total abandonment, consecration to the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now, they're not going to outrun me. Unnecessary. All I do is get provoked. I shared Sharon's, I shared Sharon Smithhurst Facebook page today. I was looking at her and Phil. Phil is an amazing business guy. He started a business because after he got out of the Angola Bush Wars, he started a business because his pastor said he couldn't run a ministry. He had to just be in business. And in no time, he made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just wealth, just poof, without any effort. And I was looking at him and Sharon and two kids sleeping on a bus, going from one place in Cambodia to a place in Thailand, going to sleep on a bus. And I just, I just text, I just wrote on Facebook, you, you were champions, you're my champions, you're champions. And she, 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 she 
put on her fa Facebook post today. Today we leave Thailand and I leave with a full heart. I leave with a full heart to hurry back here to see missionaries raised up to go to these people. Because see, Laos, you can't, you can't, it's illegal to preach the gospel in Laos. The Laosans aren't getting the gospel. I can go on and on and on. And that's what's happening. That's Father's heart. I can hear Father's heart. If you, if you get a chance, read my Facebook post. Those of you who have Facebook, you make sure that you have your protections on it. You make sure that you do not allow anybody to send you an invitation except through, uh, except through other friends. You make sure there's blocks or on your Facebook if you have it. If you, cannot, if you cannot handle it, if you're under the yoke of a demonic power in any way, you don't get rid of all stuff. Don't even have it. Forget about it. But tonight, there's enough anointing in the place where you can drive out every evil spirit. Hallelujah. You rise up in the authority of heaven. Smash hell. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. But that's the heart of Jesus. I, I shared it because Sharon was just in a very wonderful way. There's two people that could have anything that they want. And everything is for the kingdom. So beautiful. So beautiful. Don't be left out. Let God open your eyes so that you can see the inheritance he has in you. Come over in here. Get connected with what's going on. You've got signs and wonders and miracles and supernatural events happen all around you in this place. You have no idea what's going on in here. You have no idea. And many of you have no idea what's going on in this place. You look around and you've got a measure of what you call success, maybe, and you count the head, and you do a head count. Now, Papa's got so much more going on in the realms of the heavenly that he wants to do through you. Let him do it. Let him do it. His son, he said, just stop it. Just stop it. Just stop. Stop. Sell out. Sell out. Sell out for the kingdom. Sell out. Sell out. Your parents and your loved ones will start screaming. You're gone crazy. You've gone mad. You've joined an occult. Doesn't matter. Sell out. Sell out. Sell out. Sell, sell out. Sell out. Sell out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Put up the sale. Hallelujah. And let the wind of the Spirit begin to blow into your life. Oh, ah. sell out and watch signs and wonders. Watch miracles and demonstration of the power. I ought to say this the friend of mine that they held, held off to the, the hospital the other night who's running with the power of God and breaking nations open. And they got him to. As soon as they, as soon as they, as soon as he come under that yoke, he had he had the person that was driving him to the airplane to be shuttled out said, "Call Pastor Mark." They got me on the, Hallelujah! I just so honored. They got me on the horn, Hallelujah! Karabasate, he's fine, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, he's fine. Praise God, he'll be here. I think he's gonna come in November, December. When they gonna come? Something like that. They're coming here to the church in November, December, something like that. That's the guy that got thrown in jail in the Congo. And the result of him getting thrown in jail of the Congo was meeting the emperor of the Congo. Hallelujah. And the emperor of the Congo saying, this is the last great thing that I can do for my people. Is this what you suggested? Is to put a man of God, a prophet, among every chieftain in all of the Congo. Hallelujah. Sutaramaya. He's coming. Hallelujah. How old is he? He's like 38 years old. He's like 38 years old from some country town. He sold out. And God has raised him to the highest places. Come on, man. God, come on, man. Come on. You think God ain't going to use you? He sold out. He could have done anything. He could have been anything. He could have been a doctor. He could have been a lawyer. He could have been, you know, he could have been a great businessman. He could have had fame. He could have had fortune. He, got, he sold out for so much more. He sold out for heaven. He sold out to be God's representative. This is beautiful people. I'm just telling you these things because you can do these things too. God's calling you to sell out. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. We're going to take, I might tell you, we're going to take, I might I tell you, we're going to take next. Nobody left everything sold out for my name's sake and for the kingdom, except I'm going to take good care of them. Hallelujah. Hurrah, babasteya. We were with the only, as far as I understand, we were with the only person in Cuba that owns private land, 26 acres, the only person, a preacher. She could have taken possession of the land in her own name, but she wanted to give God the glory, so she put it in the name of the church. They're getting ready to get 60 more acres because the government's seeing what they're doing, and they're a model of, what they, of the change that they are willing to participate with. She looked at me, and she said, we, you will have a meeting with Raul. It will happen. I said, I know. I have what he wants. Hallelujah. I mean, I came into the nation announcing, I will, I will go and pray with Fidel Castro that he may be born again and make heaven. Because I don't want to live in heaven without Fidel. Can you imagine what these guys are thinking? Can you imagine what's going on? It's just, I was speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we were going, when we were going, listen, where were we going? Sandy's my witness. We were going. The guy who's been going for six years and knows everybody said, you're going to really have to do a lot to convince these people, didn't he? And what did I do? I got upset, didn't I? He said, I'm not convincing nothing, didn't I? I guess I got provoked. What are you talking about? Looking at me. I'm not convincing nothing. I'm not, nobody, I'm, they're not examining me. I'm examining them. I'm not convincing nobody of nothing that you put nothing on. Forget about it. I'm here as a servant of the most high God. I'm in charge. Hallelujah. It's like J.D. posted today. Go in, Goliath. Go in like Goliath and fight like David. Come on, man. Come on. And that's somebody who's charging Cambodia right now. Charging the borders of Laos. Come on. Go in like Goliath and fight like David. Oh, let there be champions of the earth for the kingdom of earth. Come on. Let there be champions. Quit with the talk. Stop with the talk. Stop with the talk. Let there be champions. Enough of the talk. Enough. Let there be champions. Let there be champions. Enough with the talk. Rise up. Rise up in the power of the authority that God has vested in us by Christ Jesus. And to exploit <laughs> These are the days. These are the days. These are the days of great exploit. These are the days. These are the days. This is the day of the great outpouring. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of Christ Jesus. The kingdoms of this world <laughs> have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and forever. Hallelujah. Let it be the resolve in your heart that there's nothing to Satan selling that you're buying. You've, here, you've come to destroy his power. To overthrow his works. To overthrow his lust. To overthrow his high-handed desires. Serve notice today that you come to destroy the works of the devil. That you come to in, empowered by the living God. Not with sword or shield, but in the name of the Most High. And it's those consecrated to the Lord. You cut yourself off. Separate yourself from the fleshly lust that would war against your soul. And you turn the battle to the gate. You turn the tables. You turn the tables on the program. You get out of the defensive posture. And you start the attack. Don't sit around wringing your hands waiting. <laughs> for your defensive reaction. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You rise up and who pakanaya say paya. Halabo sam pataya haya. Halabo sirina moshapoha. Abiding place, listen to me. It's God's nature and His way to save by few and not by many. He takes those who, who everybody else says can do it. And he said, ha ha, that's my people. Those are the ones that are absolutely discounted by men. There's no way to have a mix up here. Everybody's going to know it's God. Something happened. There's no way that they could have ever done it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You let her go. That's fine. No, no, you let her go, man. That's fine. Hey, you let her go. That's fine, man. No, that's God. That's God. It's God. It's God. It's the anointing. It's the anointing. It is. I'm glad that you want to be making sure that your kids are acting right. This is it's the anointing. And you want the anointing on her. And the more the anointing is on you, the more you guys are moving in the anointing, responding to the anointing. The more your children respond to the anointing, the more they respond to the anointing, the miracles of God take place. Hallelujah. No one's ever been, been disappointed who put their trust in God. They got out of Him exactly what He promised. They didn't get out of Him what they needed. They got out of Him all that He promised. That's more than you can think or ask. There's more. That's more than you need. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Su si rimanda yo sapa de gala la casa to pora mo si brindando. Mandea, mandea, so poi I rejoice in you, O God. I rejoice in God, my Savior. Hallelujah. Woo! He teaches my hands to war. So that a bow of steel is broken by my arm. I run through a troop. I leap over a wall. The power of the living God through me goes forth to conquer. Hallelujah. And to subdue. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's got an army. <laughs> it's marching through the land. Deliverance is in their song. Healings in their hands. Hallelujah. The exploits of God. The exploits. <laughs> the exploits of the Holy Ghost. The acts of the Holy Ghost. The acts of the Holy Ghost. It will not be long now. And these meetings will actually be being broadcasted in Cuba it's true right now right now we are interacting interacting for the first time with on Facebook with people in Cuba right now that has just happened that has just happened it just happened while we were there this not just happened we were sitting at the table with one of the pastors and we said and the guy that and some of the guys that know everything you know, the guys that know everything. And we said, yeah, you guys are on Facebook now. Oh, no, not yet. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Sandy goes, oh, yeah, I just became friends with your wife on Facebook. The pastor goes, what? <laughs> yeah, it's already happened. It's happening quicker than you can realize. Alaska Airlines start flying in September. Verizon, somebody said, uh, said the, the people were, I was sitting there with people, they didn't have cell reception, and I had cell reception. They go, What? I said, yeah, Verizon. <laughs> You're going to be kidding me. It's happening right now as we speak. Looking over here, I'm here prophesying to you. And God's doing it. God's raised up men to declare His word to change nations. If we do not prophesy, nothing will happen. If we do not preach, deliverance will not come. God chose to the foolishness of preaching to bring forth the power of the gospel to declare heaven to those who were here and to set nations free and to change cultures and to subdue those who stand against His will. It's true. I promise you, I was sitting by two cardiologists on the way into Cuba 
and they're telling me that my cell phone won't work. And everybody around me is saying, no, it's useless here. Hallelujah. We brought change. Look at you. Ha, 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 It's so exciting. It's so exciting. God will use anyone that's willing to go risk it and do it. With total abandonment. Worn out. Tired. Finances says you cannot go. God says you go. And, I don't, and I've been bought with the price and I serve only one master. Hallelujah. Here's what she said. The pastor there that brought everybody together, who's the only one who owns land in Cuba. She said, you're coming back. You've got to come back, right? She said, if you don't get back here, I'm going to come hunt you down, did she? When people begin to place a demand on the anointing, God does things through strange things. God does great things through small vessels. He does. I'm talking you tonight because there's people in here that are living under affliction and bondage while nations are being set free. I'm, hey, can you hear me? There's people in here tonight that are living under affliction and bondage and torment while nations are being delivered. Give me a break. Put a demand upon the anointing. Lay hold on the fire and the power of God that is right here present. I'm telling you. Come on, man. Quit judging things after the seeing of the eye. Quit believing things after the hearing of the ear. Quit valuing things based upon your own preferences and ideas. Go ahead. Take hold of the power of God that has been poured out upon any anyone whosoever will all flesh it does not matter who you are all you have to do is believe God all you have to do is be desperate for the things of heaven in the Old Testament they had to be so thirsty for the water of heaven that it was like their tongue swole in their mouth they were so thirsty that they were about the point of death and then God said ask and I will open up heaven and pour out floods now in the New Testament, the Lord says, all I got to do is ask for a drink. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, all you got to do is drink. Hallelujah. Come anytime, all the time. Oh, there is no limit. There is no law. There is no limitation upon anyone or no restrictions. It's just those who want to, who's willing to just rise up and do it. If you've learned how to think like men, stop it right now. Be converted and become like a little child and stop living under the restrictions of everything that everybody said you cannot do. Because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Satan worked to form within your life a bunch of restrictions you cannot. There's no way everybody but you get yourself out of the realms of men's thinking. Take up the mind of Christ. Take up the mind of the Spirit. Take up the mantle of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I believe that people start raising folks from the dead just because they go around bragging about how everybody's going to get raised from the dead. They don't shut up. Hallelujah. I believe that people start shaping nations and taking nations because they go around bragging and talk about how they're going to shake them, how that you're going to do it, how that you're going to bring down the strongholds, how that you're going to break the, the, the yoke, how that the prison doors are going to be open. Satan's no longer going to hold them. Come on, be converted. Be like a little child. Start talking big. Amen. Hallelujah. Start talking big. Come on, start talking big. Hallelujah. Start talking big. <laughs> Let his word be in your mouth and in your heart. <laughs> Let his visions and his dreams be the reality of that which you live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This night, Jesus' mighty name. It is a life marker that you'll look back on the ages to come in eternity. And you'll say, I remember that day. When we were still back in our earthly temples of clay. That night over there in San Diego in the building that we had over there 
at 90, at 90, 98, 50 or whatever it is. Huh? Hallelujah. Carroll Canyon Road. And we begin to get excited and begin to be stirred up about what God's called us to be. We decided to sell out. We decided to sell out. Woo! We decided to sell out. We decided to sell out and move up. <laughs> oh, Mama Sapataya. We decided to trade up. Ha ha. So do the Papa Ileko so Ramona Sita. Mama Elomo Suponeha. See to remember the Supavre when they shepherd your love can undisciplined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. I mean, it's going to be something to be talking about 10,000 years from now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Because I'm certain 10,000 years from now that we will be living in the new heaven and the new earth by then. No matter where we go on the planet, we'll be able to look and see the city. Hallelujah. I doubt I'm going to leave for any, any period of time unless Father just demands I go do something. I'm going to stay right there. Hallelujah. We're going to remember those days. We're going to recount the days that we were willing to step into Cuba when everybody said it can't be done. When everybody said, no, they're not going to be willing to go. I'm telling you right now, the leader stood up and with one voice said, God has sent you. We were the men that was supposed to do it. We're not. I said, I started talking to them about 20,000, 30,000 seater. They said, no, we gone for the 75,000. We going to the government. The government, we're going to tell the government 75,000. Hallelujah. We, it's, it's, going to be a, it's not going to be no small thing. It's going to be a big thing. It's going to be a big thing. They're talking me into it. The preacher that's sitting there telling me I gotta talk them into it is listening to me them talk me into it. And all I can do is smile and look at it. Look what God can do. Look what God can do. Look what God can do through you. Look what God can do. All you have to do is step out. All you have to do is step out. And you'll be living out history I'm, I'm telling you when we were in Zambia I'm telling you what we were doing in Zambia you write in history books I promise you you write that in history books where the emperor of the, of the Republic of Congo is there and the kings of Zambia are there and the papers have it on their headlines and the president of Zambia and the people of, Zam of Congo recognize that the emperor of the Congo has gone for a Holy Ghost retreat at Overland's mission and doesn't want to be bothered with, 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 with things of state. Oh! Oh, Panasaya! Oh! Oh, come on. All you have to do is step out. You just got to step out. Uh, listen, you know what? I think about this. Listen to me. I think about this. Because when they asked me to come to Livingston, Zambia this year, I had so much on the docket. It's like, how can I go to Zambia? I said, well, I said, and I said well, how do we do this? And I said to her, no, this is important. We got to go. At this time, there's no, no news. No, this, is new, this isn't even in the... This isn't even in the realms of possibility. If you would have told anybody that the emperor of the Congo was going to be there, they would have said, what? You, what? Are you, wow. Is that what you're believing God for? What a miracle. That would be amazing. I just had this urgency. And it's, a, it's just points in time where you just don't think logically. You say, I know what it's going to cost. I know how we're going to feel coming out of India. I know how we're going to feel coming out of Kashmir. I've done this before. I said, I told Anna, I said, baby, here's what I feel in my spirit. I know it's difficult, but here's what I feel in my spirit. I said, it's the most important thing that we're going to do. I don't know why, but it's the most important thing we're going to do. I'm sitting in Mississippi now, a couple of weeks before we're ready to fly out. Phil gets on the phone. He says, you will not even believe what's happened. I said, tell me. He says, the emperor of the Congo is going to be in the meetings. 
I said, Phil, that is amazing. It is amazing how God is using you. I'm here with a pre preacher right now. I'm in a meeting. I got to go. just naturally like everyday occurrence living out come on man it's not just it's not I'm, I'm saying this I'm not this isn't my self-serving thing I'm just saying God will use you Jeremiah he will use you I'm telling you Tori he'll use you I promise you he will use you every one of you by name I call you out he'll use you but you're gonna have to step out you got to risk everything it's got to cost you it can't be in the budget if it's in the budget it ain't gonna be God it ain't in the budget. Somebody said, is it a budget? I said, we don't have one. I said, we busted the budget long ago, man. We stepped out beyond the budget and started walking in the spirit and walking by faith long ago. And we discovered God's got more money than any man I've ever known. Hallelujah. God's got more provision than any man. Oh, my God. Father, so my little penny in it, try to make a business, try to make a plan, try to make some finance for the kingdom. Says, hey, that ain't nothing. I can do far better than that. Won't you just trust me? Won't you look at me? Watch what I will do. Watch, hey, you watch what I do when you just start stepping out and trusting me and going where I said for you to go. All you got to do is get passionate. That's it. That's it. That's it. You hover over it. You labor over it. You say, oh, God. I can't live without it. I gotta have it. I gotta have that which only you could do. And you find yourself raptured away. It's all about your heart of worship and praise to Him, of service to Him. Because you're not going to deny the Lord that bought you. You're going to be the slave. You're going to be the servant. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was purchased by the blood. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine how I would have been feeling if I would have said, well, I'm going to be too tired. You know, I got just so much going on. After all, we're doing cashmere. And I was there last year. And there's only going to be a few ATM, you know, students and a couple of leaders because everybody can't come in this year. Could you imagine how totally messed up I would have been to discover that I missed out on history. I say this to you because I've had this happen over and again. I've had so many times that if I would have paid attention to budgets, what men think, what my body felt like, what I believed I could do, I would have missed out on the God. I would have missed out on what God wanted to do. You get moving in the right direction. You start stepping out. You start doing. You start going. I'm doing this. I'm gonna go. I'm here. Whatever door you open up, God. Whatever opportunity I have, oh God, I can't live without. I'm gonna do these things. Get out of my way. I'm gonna do this thing. I don't care what you say. I can't do it. God said I can do it. I'm going. To, I don't care what my body says. I'm gonna tell you. God said, for I can, and I will. Hallelujah. I tell you, I refuse to be normal. I refuse to be an earthly, everyday, common, ordinary man when God has given to me. The greatness of His presence, the anointing of the Spirit has made me His habitation. I'm His inheritance. Hallelujah. I'm the one He's cast a mantle upon. I'm the one that Father said to Jesus, go anoint Mark. Go anoint Mark to Spitzbergen. Put your name there. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord says, sell out. I sold out. <laughs> we thought to do... Uh, we thought to do something big in Ramona. And Father thought to do something bigger in Oregon. It's true. Far, far bigger. A thousand times bigger. We just watch the miracle. We just watch him one miracle after another miracle as God connects the dots. Huh? As, as, as one of the primary leaders of the nation of Nepal in Parliament wants to come spend time 
with us in Oregon on the ranch. You know what? That's just going to be the beginning. It's just going to happen. People are going to come. Leaders are going to come from all the nations. They're going to come. And right now we're working to see provision. <laughs> I got the pad in. Praise God. I got the pad in for the church site. And I'm not going to do the concrete. The Lord drew the line for me. He said, just trust me. I'll do the concrete. And uh, so we're going to get that done. It's going to cost us quite a bit of money to get somebody else to do it. Hallelujah. We're just going to do that now. We're just going to start doing it. Amen. I was, looking at, I was looking at the wisdom of Phil and how he had about 15, I said, I think 15 or 16 workers from the village doing all the basic work around so that each person who had various different responsibilities in the mission stayed very focused. I said, okay. That's, what, that's a good model. I understand. Don't dilute the focus of your leaders. Got it. Hallelujah. Of course, I could say, well, you know, those, those Africans don't you know, it cost much to pay them, you know. It's fine. The, Lord, the Lord's not broke. He doesn't have a budget. And I just want to, and people, just listen to me. I, this morning when I started inviting everybody to come and begin to sow, I mean, I felt an anointing. I felt the power of God all. Did you feel the power of God this morning? <laughs> I felt the power of God all over me all morning. But when I started talking about sowing into the building this morning, <laughs> the glory. Hallelujah. The glory of heaven. Mm. I love the glory. It's just an anointing. It's a miracle anointing of the Father's witness and provision saying, I'm going to do this thing. And everybody that's a part of it is going to get blessed. And it's not, to, it's not to manipulate anyone. It's not taking something that other people have used to serve their own interests. It's just, I'm just telling you. It's just how. Right. You, this is hard for you to imagine. Are you with me? Everybody knows Pat Schatz's line. This is on tape. Pat's going everywhere inviting pastors of major churches in the United States of America to come to the ranch in Oregon for a week of ministry and they're saying when do we get to come and so what we're doing this this i'll tell you right now this is the beginning these are just tokens this is what god is doing it's tokens his father's saying go ahead keep doing it go ahead, keep going i don't know i know it's i know i know it looks big i know it looks challenging i know it looks impossible just, i'm with you i'm in it i'm doing it. because i'm telling you not leaders are going to come father is going to do great things we're going to raise up missions missionaries, nation shakers that will be taken in the, theme, the things of the kingdom of God throughout the nations of the earth for the next 200 years. There's going to be a redefinition of the way that it all happens. And God's going to do it. I, I, can, I can only say certain things and use certain adjectives because it's bigger than I can express because it's bigger than I know. I'm just walking out the miracle step by step. I, all I can do is tell you the end point of God's glory and greatness and purpose because I read it in the scripture and I say, that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. And you stand there and go, huh? You know, me, it's like, like you give me the Gideon look. You know what I'm saying? You, Gideon, who, you, who, who's he talking to, right? Why? Because you've limited yourself so long. You've had an earthly vision. Now it's time to start dreaming big in God. Start recognizing who you are. Enter like Goliath and fight like David. I love it, man. Go in like Goliath. If I like. Hallelujah. Huh? Cade, what did I tell you when I got off the airplane in Cuba? I said, did you hear the earth shake? I said, did you feel the earth shake? He's looked at me. No, I didn't. I said, well, it just did. My foot just stepped upon the nation of Cuba. <laughs> Why? I believe something about myself that is far more than anything that I value myself to be or anything that any man has ever told me or anything that belongs to a human realm. I value myself after what God said I am, what he made me and who he is inside me. Did you feel the nation? Did you feel the earth shake? Come on now. I see, I'm telling you this, people. I want you to dream big. I want you to believe God big. I want, you, I want you to believe what he said. He's in you. He's walking in you. He's tabernacling in you. God's there. The Holy Ghost is there. Christ Jesus is there. Come on, get up. Spiritually. That's good that you stood. I mean, I wasn't saying that actually, but I, good. That's good responsiveness to God hallelujah it's all father's looking for 
Hallelujah. You know, and I don't feel a little bit, even a little bit of pressure, a little bit of stress. Because the same miracle of God that organized it, the same miracle of God that made the way is the same miracle of God that's going to order the steps. And I'm going to get a telephone call and it's going to say, hey. And I started getting a little bit stressed out about it the other night. I promise you I did. And that's why I had to repent a few minutes ago. Because I know in the very near future I'm going to get a call and it's going to say, hey, Raul is ready to meet you. And Fidel says you can come and pray for him. I'm telling you. It's going to happen. And then I recognize all the stuff that I've committed to. Jesus. Amen. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy like I got all the resources that belong to God. <laughs> I'm going to prophesy like I got all the provision that belongs to the Father. <laughs> you don't know. You do not know how overcommitted I am. I'm telling you. <laughs> I am so overcommitted. But I'm, there's a place of rest. Because there's a place where you just say, look, I know, Lord, I don't have to do it. I'm going to step back. I'm not going to get stressed. I'm not going to I'm not going to get overwhelmed that I put somebody in charge of doing something that should have taken him one hour and it's been four weeks. I'm not going. Huh? That's really what I'm backing off of. Leaving it. Papa will do it. Father will raise up faithful men and women who do not want to serve themselves, who are looking for a spot on the front line, who are looking for a spot at Calvary, who's looking for the line where everybody's carrying the cross. <laughs> where is that line? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, so too. <laughs> Hallelujah! Sell out! Sell out! Sell out! Sell out! Listen, there is a time in my life where I really thought I had to provide for myself and for my family. I really did, and I said, "Lord, I'm just going to do this." You know, I had this bargain with God. And he's just so graceful, graceful and merciful, gracious and merciful. And I said, Lord, so long as I'm not full-time busy, that you don't need me so much in the, in the kingdom, I got some time, I'm going to go ahead and work. Cheating. I was cheating. And Papa loved me through it. But I made sure that I didn't cheat too much. I went ahead and gave God as much as I possibly could as though I were full-time. I really did. I just, every bit of, every spare moment, Father, I'm going to make it up. That kind of thing. And one day the transition come. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to take better care of you than you ever took care of yourself. Watch. I promise you, I stand here tonight, I tell you this. Father takes way better care of us. It's like, oh my goodness. Why did I make it so difficult on myself? You know? <laughs> I could have got into this provision such a long, long time ago. I didn't have to wait until 1996. And I promise you, the same God who loves me and is faithful to me loves you and is just every bit of faithful to you. Let me just put it to you another way. The same God who loves Christ Jesus and is faithful to him loves you in the, with the same love and with, and with the same faithfulness. He's committed to you. It's me. Baby, you're finishing up your pledge for the building tonight, huh? I am. She's been so excited about this. She, Mama just like stepped out and said, you know what? I'm going to believe. Watch me get some miracle money. I'm going to call in some miracle money. Come on, baby. I love to see... Does it, when you're when you're in touch with the fire of God, you understand that there's realms of the anointing and miracle provision that you can lay hold on, and it isn't about anything but a miracle power of God. And it's so beautiful. It, I mean, honest. How old are you, sweetie? Nine. If you start nine going on ten, I know that you always got to do that. I'm 57 going on 58. So that when you start getting a little bit older, you forget about what you're going on and wishing you were going back. <laughs> I promise you, you can train nine-year-olds to begin to move in gifts of faith, and they can begin to ask for God 
for a thousand bucks or something like that, two thousand dollars. And watch if you will let, if you'll train them and get faith. You watch it, miracle provision. You go, where on earth did you get that? You didn't get it done. You think, oh, you think they're stepping out in faith, pledging a thousand bucks is coming out of my pocket. Oh, big time, you. Oh, you the source, eh? You need to come down. You need to come down to size, man. You're not in God's place. And you're going to stand and you know, dictate to God about his miracle, faith, and power. It works better in little children than it does in adults. That's why you got to be converted, become like a little child. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, baby, it's true. Just believe God. Where are you walking in faith and total dependence upon God for provision and for protection? Where? Make sure that you're giving yourself over to just doing it. Just be big. Just dream big. Do big. Go big. Go big. Go big. I mean, for real. Go big or go home. All right? Huh? No, the Lord's going to leave you here until you learn how to go big. Amen. So we've already, we've already ordered the building. The building is being constructed right now. We paid all the down payments. <laughs> we've got the residual to pay when it comes. I was sitting there thinking, you know, here's me. I'm thinking, I'm tired. So I started thinking, oh, Lord. That's a, that's a bad thing about being tired. Oh, no, I'm thinking. So I'm thinking about when we should actually order the building. And Allie steps in, and she goes, we're going to get it as early as they can bring it to us. And I'm thinking, well, if we go a little bit later, it gives us more time to get the money. And she, we knew it now. And I'm like, you're right. Okay, good. You're thinking right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking in limitation. Please let the babies talk. Come let the children talk. Hallelujah. Let the faith people talk. Come on, let the faith people talk. Uh, you know, I told, I told Alan, I said, you know, we've got to have a plane. She's laying out here on the ground the other night. She gets up. She says, God's given us a plane. <laughs> I just love to have people around me like that. It's just such a blessing. God's given us a plane. No problem. We got this thing. It's done. Come on, people. Instead of sitting back, normalizing everything, humanizing everything, confining everything to your bad breath. You're listening to me. I don't want to smell another human being's breath. I don't want to hear another thing of flesh. I want to hear another word of doubt. I want to hear another word of limitation and confinement. Oh, let people start dreaming big. Oh, let people start having that which God has put on the inside of us, that which he has given us to subdue nations, to work righteousness, to change the course of time, to change the course of time. I said to the, I, before I go to Congo, before I went to Cuba, and, and little did I realize what God would do in Cuba. Of course I did. I understood it somewhat, but not. I said to the king of Con Congo, he was emperor of Congo, I'm standing there prophesying to him. And I said, you listen to me. Your nation will not change until someone anointed with the word of God comes and releases the word of God and prophesies those things which God has spoken in heaven over your nation. That, will, that is all that will bring governmental change. That will, that's all that will bring peace to your nation. It takes a man or a woman of faith who knows how to declare that which God is saying to change nations. That's what we're saying. Walked into Cuba and watched it happen. Hallelujah. In a day. In a day. Come on, man. God is preparing the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We went to Kashmir and we felt like we were at home. I took my clothes out of my suitcase and I was put them in the closet. And I felt like I was at home putting my clothes in the closet. It was the weirdest, craziest, one most wonderful feeling. God saying, this is your nation. I give it to you. And then you see the tanks going up and down the streets with the 50 millimeter machine guns mounted on top of them. And there's the guys looking pretty angry. And then you see the guys just over, over across the street, as it were, on the border of Pakistan and Kashmir with their tanks looking angry. And then the stadium that God says you can have, and this is where you do the meetings right in between them. <laughs> and he says, fear not, fear not. If you, won't be, if you won't become a prisoner of fear, you can have heaven revealed. 
Hallelujah. If you fear not, if you fear not, if you fear not, you'll see the mighty power of God. If you fear not, you'll see the miracles. I'm telling you, if you fear not, I'm telling you, if you step out and you'll take the risk and you'll fear not, you'll just say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't care who you are. You could do it. Tommy Hicks was a hick. Listen, Tommy Hicks was a hick. Tommy Hicks was a hick. He went to Lakeview, Oregon, and they burned his tent down. <laughs> I tell you, I'm telling you, he couldn't get 10 or 20 people in his meetings. But he wouldn't stop believing. He wouldn't stop begging. He wouldn't stop pleading. He goes to Argentina, and he lays hands on the president's God. He says, I'm going to meet the president. God supernaturally works a miracle for Tommy Hicks the Hick to uh, have a meeting with the president of Argentina. He lays hands on the president. The president gets healed. The nation is shaken by the power of God. One man who will not stop. One man who will not stop, who will not be persecuted, who will not be discouraged, who will walk in like Goliath and fight like David. <laughs> who refuses to be disqualified. Who refuses to be limited. Who refuses to be shut up and shut down and marginalized? It's time, people. It's time, people. It's time, people. I tell you by the Spirit of the Lord. I tell you by the Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time for the exploits. Yesterday may have been a time to sing about it and talk about it. But today is a time to move. Today is a time to move, to march on the land, uh, to carry out, to execute his plan, to execute the decrees of the Lord Most High. Shoo! Uh, uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I promise you, I'm telling you, looking through the eyes of the Father in this place tonight, I see people that get to be a part of the book of Acts, who get to be in the history books, who get to stand where other people ran in fear, who get to walk out and advance what other men were scared to even think about or contemplate. <laughs> who hold not their life dear unto themselves. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Um, I, I, you know, you know, just, you know, just looking at the worship leaders that Father's raising up on this platform here. Chrissy Crystal, Tori. To see what God's doing in Joshua, you're on track, man. Jeremiah. Of course, Cade, say the best for last. Which I know everything is going to say amen to you. Hallelujah. But you're all my kinsmen. You're all my family. We're born of the same blood. Hallelujah. Karabakash, sealed with the same spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus said, who's my mother and my brother and my sisters? But they who do the will of the Father. I'm telling you right now, I'm part of the family of God. I'm going to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You're going to find me in his house declaring the things that God has said in his sanctuary. I'm not going to let up. I'm not going to shut up. You're not going to let up. You're not going to shut up. You're going to rise up. You're going to shine for your glory has come. And the, God, and the Lord of his, and his glory has risen upon you like the noonday sun shining in his brightness. Like the noonday sun shining in his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nations, you just go around and you talk about it. Just talk about it. Tell people around you, oh, yeah, I'm telling you, the power of God's fallen upon the nation of America. Let's go around and talk about it. When they're talking about it, when they start talking about Trump and Hillary, that's your cue. That's your cue now to so go ahead and weigh in. Oh, yeah, power of God's about to fall upon America. Oh, 
the anointing that breaks every yoke's about to be seen from coast to coast. I'm telling you, the great exploits of God through Christ Jesus about to be revealed in me. How about you? It's your cue. It's time to start weighing in as a messenger of heaven instead of vying in with a human opinion. All caught up in what people are saying about the next thing that man's about to do. It's time for you and I to talk about what God's about to do. What the Holy Ghost is about to do. Let me tell you about who's the King of Kings. Let me tell you about what's really going on. Hallelujah. Shaku, don't miss out on your opportunity. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't waste your opportunity. We're the messengers of heaven. We're the witnesses of his glory. We've been empowered to represent Jesus. We ask for more. We ask for greater than what he did. Greater. I'm so in love with what you're doing. I want more of that. I'm so in love with what you, I'm, I'm so captivated by what you've done. I want something like that, but greater. It's the same as saying, I want to have the encounter that you've had with the Father, but I want to see much more. Do you understand that? It's an affection thing. It's a love thing. It's a compassion thing. It's a, it's a romantic thing. It's a needy thing. It's a desperate thing. It's so beautiful. I got to have more. <laughs> it's so glorious. <laughs> I want you to start talking like this. I want you to start moving like this. I don't care what circumstances. You tell me you're living in a prison? Give me a break. Did they hang you up yesterday by your ankles and beat you with bamboos in your shin? Those folks rejoiced. Did they slap you around and violate you? Well, those people rejoiced. Tell me about you living in some kind of prison. You created your prison in your own mind. Listen to me. I'm talking to every person here. I want no one being left out. Jesus came to set the captive free, to open up the prison doors to everyone who's bound. Don't you tell me he's not doing his job. Don't you tell me he didn't do his ministry. Don't you tell me he didn't make good on his word. No. Men have the right to refuse. God's not willing that any perish. Listen to me. God's not willing that any perish. But that every single human being comes to the knowledge of salvation. The knowledge that we can be delivered out of the realms of sin and iniquity and the rule of demonic power, of hate and envy and murder and every violation of immorality that can be thought of and beyond. He came as the Savior and the Deliverer to bring us over into a heavenly realm to where all of our desires about the things that He desires and that He loves and no longer there are affections captivated by a demonic, polluted realm. You and I decide whether or not we're going to participate with his will. He's not willing that any perish. He's willing that every one of us come to the knowledge of the door that has been opened up before us to step into the realms of his divine pleasure and of his grace and of his goodness. And it's time, people, that you break clean free of religion so there is a clean demarcation between your life, who you are, and what you're expressing and all that belongs to the realms of religion. It's time that Christ Jesus be revealed through you because that is the only way it is demarcated. That is the only way a distinction is made. And Father's made us well able to do it. It's about time we have some Joshua and Caleb's and say we're well able. They were just childlike. <clears throat> they might have been 80, but they were childlike. Huh? We're well able. Well, they were 40 at the time, forgive me. We're well able. They were 40 at the time. We're well able. And because everybody else made the wrong decision, they had to wait till they were 80. And at 80, they were still well able. Hallelujah. The people are, that are well able, <coughs> when everybody says you're not, are going to be the people that are going to stand and command the moon and the sun to stand still. Who are going to be those who move in the exploits of God. We are labors together of his husbandry and of his building. And if we're found cultivating and building that which he has set his hand to, 
And we and he comes as the early and the latter rain in his sovereign movings. You'll read about Tommy Hicks in history books. <clears throat> you won't read about how he burnt, they burned down his tent in Lakeview. I met, the, I met one of the pastors that burned down his tent. I kid you not, I meant he's a Holy Ghost filled man. He's repented now. <laughs> he heard me talking about Tommy Hicks in a meeting. And he came to me. He said, I'm, I'm one of the guys that burned down Tommy Hicks' tent. When he came to, I was a young Baptist preacher. And he came with all that stuff about healings and signs and wonders. And we're just country people. We didn't want none of that stuff around here. <laughs> ha. You're not going to hear about how no one showed up to his meetings. He had 10 to 15 people. And all the trial and all the tribulation and all the expense that he went through to where it looked like there was no way that he'd ever be able to amount to anything in the kingdom of God. What made him different from everybody else is he would not stop. <laughs> Having done all to stand, he stood. Well, you'll read about him in the history books is that he shook and changed a nation called Argentina. He came back to America and told people about what God did. No one believed him. They all marginalized him. They all made him back, you know, they all put him in the category of 10 to 15, 20 people. So he goes to Europe. Everywhere he went, great outpourings of God, great masses of people would assemble. Hallelujah. A prophet has no honor except for in his own country and among his own people. So Jesus, and it's of you and me, and we just got to understand that sometimes we feel, may feel a bit confined and held back among those things that are familiar to us. Listen, just go ahead, take your stand. Do not get discouraged. Do not let up. I promise you, you shall reap if you do not faint. Amen. I promise you. Amen. Yes, yes, and that's why, you know, the thing about it is when we, when we have all of our affections and things above and we're completely detached from all other interests, Satan can't play his game on us because he's going to play his game on us. He's going to pull everything, every string he can. As soon as things start popping and happening in the realms of the anointing, everything that Satan can stir up, he'll stir it up. You know what I do? I laugh. You know what I do? I say, I don't care. You didn't have it. Now what's he going to do? I don't care nothing about it. So I'm going to get killed. Big deal. Now what's he going to say? That's right. Now, neener, neener, neener. I draw the bloodlines. I draw the bloodline between you and me. And I'm not crossing over, and you can't. Hallelujah. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter where you want to or not, you can't cross the bloodline. I'm not coming over into you. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Totally detached. Say detached. Detached. If there's anything that you've heard today, t this morning and tonight, it's that one word, detached. The Lord woke me up, and he gave me that word. This morning, early in the morning, he woke me up. <laughs> and I had forgotten about it. And I sat down and at the table at breakfast. I said, Lord, what do you want me to minister on today? And the Lord said, detached. Oh, yeah. And I thought to go to one scripture, and the Lord took me to another. Ah, his miracle hand. It turns the pages of our Bible. That defines the thoughts that we think. That as we give our lives over to Him, He takes full control of our will, and the Holy Ghost begins to overwhelm our emotions and our passions. This is the life to live. Don't you choose your own life? Don't you do it? You want to go somewhere? Go to a nation. Huh? Go lay down your life. We'll get you all set up. Hallelujah. We'll get you all set up. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll agree with you for provision. Praise God. And we don't have to do that. So I said, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to seek direction. What are you talking about? You already got it. Seek direction. You got direction. How many of you know what the direction is? Don't you say anything. God's already given us direction. What is it? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. One night, when I, I'm just at it, I'm just worn, and I'm just going after the thing. Sandy gets a little distracted. I said, you get over here. I own you. <laughs> For right now, you're here. Don't you move. 
We're breaking down this wall. And she was just so, it's so beautiful to have people around you who know how to properly respond to the anointing. And there's no offense. And they like totally understand that. People that heard it, they were like shocked. He owns her. Hallelujah. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Because we pushed her to the limit. I'm telling you right now, we pushed her. We made her feel like she failed after the meeting was over. Tell her, step up into a greater anointing. Huh? Huh? Drive the thing forward. Drive it forward. Come out the blocks faster. Come on. Now, come on. What are you doing now? You're diminishing the anointing. Step up. You got somebody saying, I'm going to do it. Yes, by the power of God, I'm coming. Instead of going, I tried my best and he didn't appreciate it. Human, human, do nothing. Purely human. I mean, you felt though that, right? You could feel the last night being increased in anointing. You just imagine how I had to feel the first night. You dragging a thing down. Now, I'm. God made up the difference. I just looked over. I kind of ignored it. I looked over and I said. In my spirit, I said, fire God comes on you right now. Jesus. And there was no resistance. People, we've got to have that kind of connectivity. All our worth's got to be in Him. All our value's got to be in His anointing. It's like, okay, come on, man, bring it. Tell me I'm ready here for some instruction. I'm, I'm coming. I'm running to ra- this race to win. I didn't come over here to get a trophy for losing. No. <laughs> Phil told me, he said, he said, I've got. I took my kids out of school. Let me tell you why I took them out of school. He says, he says, Cairo goes, and he and he had a pretty, a pretty poor team. He said he was like one of the best on the team, and he's not that good <laughs> on the soccer team. And they totally lost everything. They were last, they were totally last. And they gave him a trophy. He said, I took the trophy away. <laughs> You don't get a trophy for losing. Where's the trash can? You don't get no trophy. We don't get a trophy for losing. That is demonic. We don't get no trophy for <laughs> We get a trophy for winning, son. We don't accept no trophy for losing. That is a demonic realm. You're not going back to school. I'm like, I'm five over here, Phil. Hallelujah. People sitting around in the church, they want a trophy for losing. They want a trophy for a derelict of duty. They want a trophy, and they got barely enough anointing to show them the blip in the monitor of the kingdom. We're here to train you. We're here to, yes. we're here to perfect you. We're here to mentor you. We're here to tell you how to come out the blocks faster. We're here to tell you how to cut one-tenth of a second off your time. Somebody said, what's one-tenth of a second? It makes the difference of winning and losing. We're here to show you how to move solely in the power of God. Under the power of His anointing, we, we signed up. We signed up. What a blessing it is, you know, to go minister with people who signed up. You don't have to go, oh, no, they're over there, so, they're over there sulking and their bad attitude over in the room. Who knows if we can regroup or not. <laughs> no, they in the battle. They in the fight. They right there with you. Bring it. What do you need of me? Amen. What do you need of me? We will require it of the Lord. Yes. That's all you need. That's all you need, and the anointing provision is there because you're willing to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You're willing to thrust all your cares. You're willing to thrust all your affections, your Ishmael. Thrust him into the care, not give him your provision. Thrust him into the provision of the Lord. Oh, I pray that you can hear it. I pray that you can understand the Father of faith and the example that is set before us, and you begin to understand today what God has called you, the abiding place. I feel, let me tell you what I feel, and sense in the spirit, something that I'm familiar with because I was alive and very up 
close to what was going on in what we call the Jesus revival, where there was such a move of God that you begin to talk to anybody about Jesus and the power of God would come upon them. They would break. They would begin to weep. All they could think of is, I want Jesus. I want his ministry. I want to be a heavenly person. I feel it. It's happening. It's stirring in heaven. The sovereign movings of God. Father is preparing a people that are ready for the day. Ready for the day. And, and this is what we're saying, people. God has called us into a commonality with himself where everything about our lives is heaven. Can you feel it? I can feel it. Can you feel it? I can, I can feel it. I t- can you feel it over there? Can you feel it over there in Oregon? Can you feel it over there in Iowa? Can you feel it over there in Washington? Can you feel it over there in the nation that you're watching from? Can you feel it? It's happening. It's not just America. It's your nation too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say detached. Detached. All my affections are seated seated at the right hand of the Father. Right right where Jesus rules and reigns. reigns. I have no affections. I have no affection. I have no attachment. I have no attachment. I have no commitment commitment to this world. To to human existence. To to earthly things. things. I denounce them. I I was bought. I'm not my own. I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm the servant of the Lord. I will not deny the Lord who bought me. I will not deny the Lord who bought me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise God. Come worship the Lord with your giving. Worship Him. Worship Him. If there's anyone here in the place you need prayer for anything, we're here to pray pray with you. Find a bunch of people around you. Love them. Bless them. Tell them that the best thing in your life is Christ Jesus. And you're so blessed to be here worshiping, fellowship with them, whatever God lays on your heart. Hallelujah. Just say, I want to go to the nations too. Whatever. Talk about the things of heaven. Let the word of the Lord fill your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Father's here to touch you. He's here to heal you. He's here to strengthen you. Do not give your best to the things of this world. Do not. Do not. You give your best to the kingdom. In Jesus' name. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. We love all of you. We just love you dearly. We want you. We just, we, we plead with you. Grab a hold of what God wants to do through this ministry. Through your lives. More than ever before. Grab a hold of it now. <clears throat> Ann and I are just going to be running. I mean, the Lord is opening up so many doors. We're going to be running. We've got a commitment to be here every Sunday. There, is, there, there are going to be a couple of Sundays that we're going to have to miss because, you know, people are just putting a demand upon us and the Lord's saying, respond to the demand. Do it. So that's why we need you just to be that much more committed, that much more earnest about what God wants to do through this ministry and through you personally in the midst of this ministry. If you'll do it, I'm... There will, there will not be anything lacking of all the good promises of God in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this song that we've been singing, it's a real keeping song, you know? I was walking through... I was walking through the Reno airport, and they got all that worldly stuff going on. And you know what the Holy Ghost began to scream through me? God is holy, and he made me holy. It's just a separation song. God is righteous, and he made me righteous. God is almighty, and I worship him alone. Alone, I'm in Him, and 
and he's in me. I'm in him and he commanded me to be. We headed to a good spot. We headed to a good place. Whew. We're on the road to a destination that you cannot even imagine. Hallelujah. Boy, when we arrive, let the celebrations begin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who my Whatever you need tonight, just receive it. Whether you're standing up here or sitting out there or watching by the web, just receive it. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is here to supply it. The power of God is present to heal you, to supply all your needs according to his riches. Hallelujah and glory. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sikaranda taridivishtipe. Hallelujah. Ramon Satan. I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Live out the life that God commands. I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Live by the Spirit. Jesus. Jesus. Maconda se pinda la bacate. Mi ambrara de chiquingla lo sotorini. Grazie. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Nathan, you come up here. Scott, come here too. Just let your hands be taken. Not lament nor diminish that which God's called you to be and do by turning your heart and affections away from Him unto other things. Seek Him alone. Stand fast in an inheritance that goes beyond the infinite. In Jesus' name, walk in that fiery faith, certainty. God will do whatever you ask him.
bless you. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. Almighty woman of God, I bless you right now in Jesus' name. Be valiant. Do exploits. Mungia na mashikinga lolo buksambre de tequila na na mosapaya. For the Lord your God is with you. Is it a mambre deya? Yes, and stands in the midst of you, mighty to save, <laughs> mighty to deliver. Mumbranga saki and the bakutara na sedeya. Usedere nashte. Do not doubt. Only believe. These are the days of great exploits, of hands blown off growing out, of tumors and cancers dissolving and being destroyed by the word of the Lord and by the spirit of the living God and the vessels that have surrendered their lives to him. Blind eyes open up at the command of the servants of the Lord, deaf ears being unstopped, the dead raised life again, nations shaken by his power. Now in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, right now in Jesus' name, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you right now. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. you can do with the rest of your life. Huh? Oh, bad God. <laughs> That's just like God asks us a question and give us the answer. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. Change comes in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. That's right. By his spirit. In Jesus' name. Stand up. He's not just standing with you.
nuestro Señor. Can you imagine yourself as, as it were your life being an arrow the father puts in his bow and shoots Strengthen me. Strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord to do that which is right. Now, in Jesus' name. Now. Exploits of faith be made manifested, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. God decrease it and I decrease it. Oh, what happened? We begin to move with Him, we discover our heirship and our authority in Christ Jesus to execute His sovereign stand in Christ's stead to live out and execute those things which the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has decreed. Wow. Wow. Heirs of God co-inheritors
tonight in the name of Jesus, God has decreed and I decree it too. God has ordained that he's willed it and you must will it too. That this be a night of life marker that you look back on throughout eternity and you say that night, that, that, that night that the Lord cried out and called us to detach ourselves from all earthly affections and interests. To recognize where we've served mammon and I myself. To return unto him who purchased us and brought us to live his life. And we sold out. We sold out. We went home and we sold out. We sold out. And we turned our life completely over to the service of the Lord. To no longer be the bondman of men. But to be the Lord's bondman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shoo. The Lord had uttered his voice before his armies. And they ran on the cities. And they climbed up the walls. Great is his army who carries out his word. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Speak life in your body. Healing to every part, every member in Jesus' name. is his army who carries out his word. His army may only be 300 people who with it he conquers and subdues. Those on his side may be the minority. The two from the ten. The great is his army. His army may only be one, an Elijah. One, Christ Jesus, the captain of our salvation. One. The great is his army who carries out his word. Amen. Be that army, abiding place, be that army. Let not sin be named once among you. Let there be nothing of self-will. Let there be nothing of purpose, personal interest, pursuit. But let God bend you and break you and mold you and make you. Let him consume you with his divine purposes, with his will. Let him consume you with the things that he's willed for your life to the point where you cannot possibly imagine living without them. That you must have these things. Recognizing in a realm of faith that they are yours. And ye shall not be without them. So you rise up with whatever you have right now. With whatever ability that God has given and entrusted you right now. 
and you begin to be very focused upon what Father's called you to do right here in the midst of this church, in service, right here with a heavenly vision that God's placed right here, right here in this house, right here, not across the street, not over there, right here. Don't miss out, because we're going to shake nations. Don't miss out, because we're going to work righteousness. Don't miss out. This is what history books are written about. Don't miss out. Amen. You're in it. Don't miss out. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't miss out on the day of your visitation. Hallelujah. Be all in. Say, I'm all in. Just stand and sing it with me one more time, will you? God is holy, and He made me holy. God is righteous, He made me righteous. God is almighty, we worship Him alone. And 